Hello, uh, <clears throat> hello. I'd like to welcome everyone to this public hearing and meeting of the Amherst Community Preservation Act Committee on December 8th, 2022. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Uh, pursuant to the decision of the town of Amherst, uh, which is permitted by the state, we are meeting remotely. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. Um, I'm going to call on committee members here to make sure that they can be heard and that we can, uh, we can be heard ourselves as well. Um, my name's Sam McLeod, uh, Tim. Uh, Tim Neal here. Robin. Oh, yep, here. Dave. Here. Matt. Here. Katie. Here. Okay, I can hear all of you. Now there's one other uh, name that appears on the screen uh, that has not yet been changed. It says Sonia Aldrich. Uh, the individual is muted. Uh, I'm wondering who this person might be. Um, if you're able to change your name so that we can identify you, or perhaps um, turn your camera on, that could be helpful. Um, I know that Michelle uh, indicated that she was going to be about 10 minutes late or so, and I did get a uh, text from Andy McDougall, who is traveling, and his uh, travel arrangements it's changed, so he's going to be uh, unable to attend, possibly being able to make it later. Uh, you were saying something, uh, Sonia? It was Sean. I it suspected Sean. it. Okay. That's what I suspected too. <laughs> yeah. uh, hello, Holly. Um, and we see Sean, or rather, we see his name, not the microphone. So um, the meeting is recorded. We do have access to the video, but um, we do need to take minutes for the uh, meetings that we have and we do it as committee members. And I'm wondering if anyone would like to volunteer to take minutes for this meeting. I, 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 was hoping I, could, I was hoping I could volunteer next week. Okay. <laughs> if that's okay, just cause I've got to finish my coursework, but um, will someone else stand up this week? I mean, I can do it this week too, but. If if we uh, don't have any volunteers, uh, I will do so. Um, so why don't we assume that I will do the minutes for this week and Robin, we will in advance consider you the front runner for taking minutes next week. Thank you. Uh, we do, uh, I believe it was Katie who, or Tim, I forget which, who brought up the concept of including the recording link in our minutes uh, with the suggestion that they not be quite so um, detailed, uh, given that the information resides elsewhere. Uh, the members of the committee have their own styles of presenting the minutes. Uh, certainly short, Shorter is not a bad thing from the minute taker's perspective. Uh, it's at the discretion of the person who's taking the minutes, of course, how they wish to proceed. Uh, it might not be a bad idea to go to the town website and uh, copy the recording link and put it in uh, the minutes. But that's for the minute takers to decide. So, um, The, the first item on our agenda this evening uh, is a public hearing for all proposals. This is a uh, part of the CPA Act indicates that there's a requirement to have a quote unquote formal public hearing for the projects, uh, which we have designated as today where uh, community members uh, can be certain that there'll be an opportunity for them to speak on any given project that they wish to. 
as a committee, we've had public comments on most of our meetings on a regular basis anyway, uh, but we've designated this as such. Uh, we have received a number of letters from community members. Sonia has sent some out uh, previous to today. She's been providing them as they come in, and we did get a number of other ones today. I'm not sure if all of the committee members have had the opportunity to see them yet or not, but certainly um, after the meeting, uh, between now and the subsequent week, you will have the opportunity to read them if you haven't, or you could even look at them uh, as we are talking. So I would like to, I see that Michelle has just arrived. Um, uh, we can see you, Michelle, can you hear us? I can. Okay, uh, you have not missed anything. We've just uh, determined the uh, minute taker and uh, we're about to start uh, public comments. There's a number of members, in, attendees that we can see. Uh, in the meeting and we will call on you if you raise your hand. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and call on names and anyone who wishes to make a comment, uh, please uh, please do so. At present, I see the first name as Matea Kramer. Uh, so if you're able, Sonia, could you either bring Matea into the room or make sure that her audio can be heard or his, I'm not sure he or she. Oh, it says she, okay. Uh, Hi there, this is Matea. Uh, Matea, uh, thank you for stating your name. I'm sorry about the mispronunciation. So- No problem at um, all. We can hear you and uh, we welcome your comment on any of the uh, projects. Thank you so much. Uh, again, my name is Mattia Kramer. I'm on East Pleasant Street here in Amherst, and I'm speaking tonight to urge the committee to use CPA dollars for affordable housing. Um, as um, you guys well know, the town has made a commitment to end structural racism in Amherst and achieve racial equity. That's a laudable goal. And there is uh, a great deal of work yet to do uh, in order to move toward that goal. Uh, and an essential part of that work is affordable housing. Um, affordable housing is essential in order to address and ultimately, we hope, heal our town's very long history of economic exclusion. Uh, so for the future of this town, and for the promise of equality, uh, I ask you tonight, please use CPA dollars for affordable housing. Thank you so much for hearing me this evening, and I appreciate the work that you're doing for our town. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mattia, and thank you for your comments. Um, Jennifer Shaw, we see your hand up is raised. Uh, are you able to bring Jennifer into the meeting? We can see your screen in the meeting, uh, Jennifer. Um, I'm hoping you can hear us. Yep. And Hi, if everyone. you can go ahead and uh, state your name, uh, where you live, and uh, whatever comment you wish to make. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jennifer Shaw. I live in uh, I live on 291 Pontline Lane in Amherst. I am a member of the Amherst School Committee, but I'm here speaking just for myself. Um, that being said, you should all have received an email from the chair of the Amherst School Committee letting you know that the school committee had voted to voted unanimously to endorse the fields portion of the Fort River um, fields uh, playing fields application. And um, I'm personally really excited about this, uh, this application and I, um, I, I urge the committee members to to fund it um, the, the the fields will benefit the school community as well as the community as a whole. It will also make it that much easier or that much better for the um, debt exclusion override for the school project to pass voters. So if, if for those people who don't have kids in the school or don't, don't have young children or don't have, um, you know, don't have a vested interest in, this, in the schools, it will be easier for them to be able to vote in favor of this project. And that is gonna benefit, it's gonna be, it's gonna benefit everyone. So I um, I urge you to vote to support that project. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you, Jennifer, for joining us and for uh, providing comments for us to, to hear. Um, Meg Gage, we see your hand is raised. We can see your screen in the meeting. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to Great. hear us or thank not. Thank you. I have a, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, um, we can hear you. So I don't know why your, your pictures are all frozen in the sound, but I heard Jennifer and Michaela uh, fine. So I'll just go ahead. I'm uh, Meg Gage. I live at 208 Montague Road with my husband across the street from where the Ball Lanes Community Homes Project will be. And I would like to speak in great support, enthusiastic support for the project. This project the, with working with Valley Community Development is an amazing example of a development project that right from the start has been working in partnership with the local neighborhood. At our District One Neighborhood Association annual barbecue in September, we invited them to do to present and they had came with uh, amazing uh, visual display and little model houses that participants could move around the property and sort of explore how uh, give input and suggestions about how the houses might be arranged. Um, I haven't heard any negative comments from anyone in our neighborhood except for little things about like where the driveway would be and how the cars would come, you know, technical things, uh, specific things, but people are very enthusiastic. Uh, and we particularly welcome eligible first time home buyers uh, at the uh, Beacon Project over at the Mill District. I think there's 30 affordable housing apartments, they're not home ownership. And they those families who in those apartments have really enriched our community uh, enormously, kids getting off the school bus and so on. We would really like to have more affordable housing in our neighborhood. This is a great neighborhood for families. We have the Mill River Park, the pool, the ball fields, an amazing new library we're gonna have starting in the fall with a community room, uh, the Mill District, uh, shops from Puffer's Pond, amazing conservation land and trails. It's a great, great neighborhood for uh, moderate income families with a huge amount of free resources available. So I really hope everyone will get behind this project. Thank you. And hi to everybody there. I'm sorry you're all frozen, but you'll be glad to know that you're frozen in a good way. Way it does. It's a good freeze. <laughs> we're, we're not actually frozen. We're in an alternate universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, to, good to see you, uh, Meg. Thank, thank you, you very for, much. Thank you for good joining you. us. And thank you for your comments. Um, Rudy Perkins, I see uh, you in the audience with your hand raised. Um, Someone has to allow Rudy to talk, I think. Sonia, are you able to bring Rudy into the meeting? There we go. Here we go. How's that? Uh, we can hear you, Rudy. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thank you, Rudy Perkins, Cherry Lane, Amherst. As you know, I'm one of the co-applicants for the Fort River Community Recreational Fields application. But I wanted to speak here tonight in my individual capacity as a resident of the town and a, a property taxpayer to encourage you to give the largest award you can reasonably give to the field renovation portion of our community recreational fields application. I think we can come back for the uh, lighting in the community restroom uh, portion of our request at a subsequent uh, CPA funding cycle, in my view. Um, I'm a strong supporter of the new Fort River Elementary School project, but I'm also a parent of an Amherst public school student who's been involved in the after school ultimate programs. And that's where I started realizing going over there to the Fort River schools where they play and practice, just how widely that's used as an economic, as a an recreational asset for our community. So we have a, an opportunity here to advance both the school and the playing fields aspects of the Fort River redevelopment. The CPA funds would serve the dual purpose um, of backstopping and ensuring the full planned redevelopment of the fields. And I know there will be later budget pressures 
um, that could lead to value engineering of things. And we wanna make sure that the fields part is kept in to the maximum it can be. My experience is that if an uh, element of a project brings its own funding to the table, it's very unlikely to be cut. So that would help, the CPA funds would help guarantee the field renovation. And secondly, the field renovation will um, effectively reduce with CPA funds will effectively reduce the ask to the taxpayers for the, the school project itself and will expand the constituency for that. And I, I feel like that's gonna help with the debt exclusion vote as Jennifer and others have mentioned. This is no doubt one of the reasons why the Amherst School Committee endorsed the field renovation component of our application. So again, we, as we said last week, we need the field renovation component approved in this funding cycle. So it'll be in place as the community goes to the debt exclusion vote in this, this spring and the impact of this funding um, lowering the debt exclusion request effectively will be felt. Um, the school and the fields project are, are more cost effective and feasible if done in tandem. So we, we, if we don't get the school debt pa exclusion passed, the field project is very unlikely to be done for the foreseeable future, field renovations there. No um, debt exclusion vote, no school, no school, no field renovation. It's that simple. And we need both, in my view, both the school project and this recreational asset redeveloped. I do want to add, though, that I'm also a strong supporter of affordable housing. And um, that's been a long time interest of mine. It was my work. And I hope that the committee can find a way to also give strong support to affordable housing in our town. Um, I think that maybe the timing of the funding needs will help in this regard. You guys would know better than me. But as Kathy Shane, the, the chair of the school building committee, mentioned last week, we probably wouldn't need the fields renovation money until 2025. I'm hoping that would leave the FY 2024. If you, you, you'd have to make the award now so it can have an impact on the vote. But I'm hoping that that later need for that funds would allow you to use the FY 2024 money in fuller measure on these other very worthy projects in our town. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy, uh, for joining us, and thank you for your uh, prior presentation and for your comments today. Um, I see a hand raised by someone named Elisa, who is now viewable. Uh, Hi. The, yes. Yes. Can you Elisa, state your, state sure. your name? Elisa Campbell. I live at, on Pine Grove in Amherst. And I'm actually speaking for the League of Women Voters to support funding for subsidized affordable housing in Amherst. And we have not taken a position you know, on one project versus another, but we, the League has supported affordable housing in Amherst for decades and continues to do so. So I'm here to just say that again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Elisa, for joining us uh, and for speaking. And uh, thanks to the League of Women Voters for all that they do. Um, I see Steve Rogers in the audience with a hand raised. Greetings. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the committee for taking the time to address these issues. Um, so Steve Rogers, I'm uh, a resident at uh, 99 Pulpit Hill Road, so close to adjacent to the Ball Lane uh, property. Uh, we would very much love to see some affordable housing done in that space. There's a desperate need in the town and the region for affordable housing. Uh, Amherst is a place that has become almost inaccessible for folks of low and moderate income, in which I have children that live in that in that economic strata and how difficult it is for them to find housing. And uh, I would second Meg Gage's, um, you know, sort of summary of the advantages of that particular location for affordable housing. There's public transport. Uh, there is access to multiple facilities like the Mill River and, and the pond and the, the woods. 
And, uh, you know, I, full disclosure, I worked at Valley CDC long ago in the 90s and have about 10 years in affordable housing. And uh, I understand how difficult it is to package these projects. And Valley is brilliant at it and, uh, and does a great job when they execute on a project. So I would strongly support the committee uh, allocating as much funds as possible for this project on Ball Lane. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Steve, for joining us, and thank you for your comments. <clears throat> I see a name of uh, someone named Laura in the audience, if we can bring Laura in. We can see Hi. you. Can you hear me or see me? The, the audio seems to be slightly uh, difficult to hear. Can you... Check your microphone again, please. Um, probably what I'll do is... we're, we're not able to hear you on our end. And go on to my computer. I'm on my phone now. So yeah, I think I think that would be desirable because we can't we really can't hear you. The the audio uh, is so yeah. delayed. So what we're gonna do, Laura, is we're gonna proceed calling on other individuals and we will look to see for your name if we can can find it uh, at a later point in time in the meeting. I'm sorry that uh, uh, the connection wasn't working for you. You also do have the capacity, I believe, to ask a question. And in that question, you could actually make a statement. We'd be we'd be able to read it if need be. Um, and that I goes think, for- I think she's left. She, she okay. just came off the computer on her own, so. Okay. Anyone else who is in, <clears throat> the, uh, in the audience uh, attending, if for some reason we're not able to hear you, uh, there is the capacity in Zoom to uh, type a question in the question and answer, and we can see those. So that's an alternate method potentially of making a statement. Um, so um, next name that I see is an individual named Lawrence. Thank you, uh, Lawrence Quigley. I'm at the end of Ball Lane. Uh, yes, it's a noble and worthy cause. Uh, put it in my front yard. Uh, it's a good thing you're doing uh, this uh, development. I, I support it. I'm, I'm very concerned uh, because I know uh, that oils and uh, antifreeze and uh, lead weights were thrown in the uh, drains over the shop. I, I've been here 28 years. There, nobody's denying it. Uh, and uh, I'm concerned that 30 years from now, we're going to find out that the underserved were given the, uh, the uh, toxic place. And uh, it's, it's going to look bad for everybody, especially the people who live there. Uh, so uh, it, I, I support it completely. And I, they did not test under the pad itself. They did not lift the drain co cover to see what's down below the pad itself. They went all around it. And there are lead weights on the property, little piles of them. Lead is toxic. Uh, so I, uh, I, I'm completely in support of, and uh, I, I would like the, as, as many, as much help as possible as, as uh, in order to not find out in 20 years that, uh, that something was down there that has been looked over there. And uh, one more thing is I, I want to make a pitch for helping old people uh, stay in their houses by uh, other towns, uh, put a roof on somebody's house kind of thing uh, and, uh, you know, retrofit and stuff. And Amherst, is, as far as I've tried to find out, doesn't. I'd like to make a pitch for them to uh, complete support for uh, this project. Uh, and I'm concerned about finding out later. Uh, that uh, it also it's a wildlife corridor. Is anybody is anybody paying attention to the disruption of the wildlife corridor? I'm, I'm concerned about that. All kinds of animals come through. Uh, and uh, uh, is anybody looking out for them? Thank you very much for all your service, everybody. Thank you so much for your service. And this is a good project. I support it. 
and I don't know how to get off. I'm, I uh, I don't know how to do this, but it popped up and Sonia's in charge. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, joining us, Lawrence, and thank you for sharing your comments uh, with our committee and with those in the audience. Uh, Dr. Leslie Salisbury uh, appears in the audience with a hand raised. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, so thank you for allowing us to have space to speak on these topics. Um, I want to speak about uh, the support of the affordable housing, uh, single family housing and home ownership um, from two perspectives. Uh, so I'm here in two capacities. One uh, as a board member of the Valley CDC and also as a resident of Amherst. Um, and I see Sonia that I've had a chance to work with some time ago. Um, but so as from a personal perspective, coming here uh, as a graduate student, as a single mother with my son, um, the goal was to be able to contribute to my community, raise my son here in the community, and at some point be in a position where I could afford to uh, live in the community by being a homeowner. Um, and that has never uh, panned out for me, uh, even at some point being a grad student working anywhere between two and four jobs just to make ends meet um, to raise my son here. And uh, as I said, being a student here. And so being able to have affordable housing for um, this huge disparity for people of color or minorities within Amherst, um, I think having that opportunity to begin to create generational wealth is very important, especially as we talk about our commitment to uh, supporting uh, in this community. I think building wealth and uh, generational wealth is important and it gives the next generation something to stand on, um, which I don't fully see in, in our community. And then from a pro professional perspective, I had a chance to work with the town um, running the social town-wide social justice program and working with um, uh, each one of the departments actually within the town and working with the town manager and looking at the disparities and how one zip code has an impact on their health outcomes with minorities. And one of the conversations that I had uh, a wonderful opportunity to have was with um, Chief Livingston when he was just coming in uh, to the area. And we talked about um, the concern of having diversity within the police, uh, police force. And he was sharing that one of the reasons why it was very difficult to recruit is because it was his own officers couldn't afford to live in the places that they actually uh, work in. And so building a stronger community relationship with police officers from a social perspective within their communities, um, bringing voices in or bringing families in or police officers to be able to live here. So I think it's, it's multi-layered, it's creating generational wealth, uh, for next generations is creating opportunities for people like myself to be able to purchase a home here and not have to worry about leaving my community simply because I can't afford to purchase a home and my rent probably being more than a mortgage should be where I can't invest in something that I can pass on to my son. Um, so just lending a voice, you know, from my perspective personally and professionally, I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, I have loved working in this community and, and um, being a part of it. Um, and as I said, I had the uh, honor to work with Sonia in that particular project, which she was a phenomenal contributor to the voice and the dialogue and the narratives that we were having. So thank you for hearing me out. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Salisbury, and thank you for sharing your comments uh, with us and with the uh, community attendees. Thank you. Um, Kathy Shane. Hi, um, am I on? You're on, Kathy. Um, I'm Kathy Shane. I live at 519 Montague Road, and you've heard from me before, and you all know I'm a town councilor. I just want to say this time I'm calling in on Ball Lane. I live just north of Ball Lane and where this project would come in. And we had a community uh, event where Valley CDC came with the topography of where it is. And you could 
sense the excitement of everyone as, and, and Valley CDC's interaction as we moved the little condos around and said, well, could they be here? Could they be there? And what about a walkway over to where the bus stop is? So the whole, everyone who was there was trying to figure out how to make this work even better. And they were taking notes, which was amazingly exciting for a community. Um, Meg already talked about its location, but it's right on a bus route and it's you can walk up Pulpit Hill, you can go right up to Puffers. There's all this conservation land behind it. So you can get to town. You potentially actually don't need a car <laughs> to get around, to get downtown. And the sense of people um, being able to own over the long term, I mean, this is what makes it unique. We had people at that meeting and also on an earlier presentation saying, how do I get in the queue? And so there's a lot of interest. I just want to say there's a lot of interest in local residents on would they have an opportunity to be in one of these. And I'll just stop there. Be, um, and I know as a counselor, I probably, I'm, ju I'm just talking that I don't think I've seen that level of excitement about a housing development right in our midst ever before. It was fantastic. And I am going to exit. And I just wanted to make that statement to go with Megs on the community support of this. Thank you, Kathy, for joining us as always, and thank you for uh, your comments. Uh, Tony Cunningham. Hello, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. I, I was traveling last week when our application was presented. I was sorry to miss the meeting. Thank you for offering this public hearing as a way to hear from residents which applications they support. I would like to offer my support for the Ball Lane affordable housing development and hope it will be awarded funding. And obviously as a co-applicant, I'm hopeful you will award the Fort River Community Re Recreational Fields as much funding as possible. If I may, I'd like to share some comments made by some of our town leaders about using CPA funding to improve the playing fields at Fort River. At the elementary school building committee meeting when Fort River was selected as the preferred site for the new larger school, Superintendent Michael Morris said, if the CPA committee wants to contribute to defray the cost along the way of this project, that's awesome. I really appreciate it. And it would be, I think, a wonderful idea. At a school committee meeting last month when sharing the feelings of the elementary school building committee about the CPA application, Dr. Morris said, the building committee was highly supportive of the efforts that would support reducing the cost of the project itself in terms of the field work. And I certainly was as well. I am broadly supportive of these efforts and do appreciate our community members for stepping forward and thinking through how this effort could support the building project moving forward, both in terms of community support and lowering costs. Uh, Regional School Committee Chairperson Ben Harrington said, my personal thought is why wouldn't we support this? And that was prior to the school committee taking a unanimous vote in favor of the application, the fields part of the application. And regarding the comfort station, town manager Paul Bockelman said at a building committee meeting, I think we are hearing more and more demand for public restrooms in areas where there are events. And of course, this will be a premier location for recreational events. So I just wanted to share those comments because I'm, I'm sure people aren't watching a million meetings of various committees. Um, and they were at various meetings over the last couple of months. Uh, I look forward to your discussion this evening and I thank you for your service to our town. Thank you for joining us, Tony. Uh, thank you for sharing your comments and thank you for your effort uh, in your proposal uh, along with your fellow applicants. Um, we appreciate your uh, efforts. Um, Mary Sayer. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Mary. Oh, good. I'm uh, Mary Sayre from um, District 1. I live on Pine Street in North Amherst. And um, I, I came on to talk in favor both of the affordable housing and the playing fields uh, at Fort River. Um, I'm not going to say much because Kathy took the words right out of my mouth. I was at that um, at the District 1 Neighborhood Association picnic where CDC presented their neighborhood concept and I'm 
as a North Amherst resident, I'm really excited about having more families move into our neighborhood. Um, and I was very excited by CDC's interest in making this um, more like a pocket neighborhood, which is a, a concept of really making the housing feel like a neighborhood and of people owning and having control of where they live, which is um, so very plus on that. And Tony and Rudy pretty much said what I would have said about the uh, playing fields at Fort River. So I won't take up more time, but I hope you will support both of those projects. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mary, for joining us and thank you for your comments. Uh, Laura Fitch. Hi, I've moved to a different computer now, so hopefully you can hear me. We can hear you, Laura. Okay, great. Um, I just want to say yes in my front yard for the um, Ball Lane uh, project. I think um, Meg and Steve in particular uh, said what I would have said about it. I, I walk by the property from, I live at, I'm um, sorry, at uh, uh, 120 Pulpit Hill Road, the co-housing community that's diagonally across from it. Um, uh, I walk by it, drive by it, bicycle by it. We've had our eye on that property for a long time, hoping that this is exactly the type of thing that would happen there. Um, and the only thing that I would hope, and I didn't really see this on the plans that I saw, is that the what's the better farmland is kept as farmland and the part that's already um, been a truck uh, industrial site uh, be where most of the parking and um, housing is. I mean, that's the way I think projects should be developed. It's actually zoned the other way around, the farm preservation uh, is on the back part where it's already contaminated so or or developed or whatever. Um, so I just hope the town works with them to flip that zoning. Maybe you don't need to with a uh, this if it's a 40B project, but keeping the agricultural land as much as possible would, would be great. All right, thanks. Thank you, Laura, for your perseverance and finding another way to communicate with us. Uh, and thank you for your attendance and comments. Uh, Mary Kraus. Hi, um, I unfortunately can only pop into this meeting briefly. Um, I heard the tail end of what Laura just said, and it probably echoes exactly what uh, what I would like to say. Um, I'm very happy to see this affordable housing project go in next door. So I also uh, live uh, on Pulpit Hill Road um, at Cherry Hill Co-Housing. Um, and I agree about the, uh, you know, the impacted land being a better place to develop housing and parking and the uh, farming land, the land that actually has been used for farming, um, you know, being remaining with that sort of purpose or open space uh, kind of a use. Um, but just wanted to chime in to say I'm very much uh, in support in general of this project. I've looked at some of the earlier plans. I have not yet had a chance to see the updated plans. Um, so thank you for letting me comment. Thank you for joining us, Mary, and thank you for your comments. Um, I'm not seeing any hands raised among attendees. Um, I'd like to ask attendees if they wish to speak uh, to raise their hands so that we can see you. Uh, the only way we can identify if you have a comment to make is if you do so. Um, I do see a hand has been raised, uh, Alicia Walker. Um, hello, everyone. I just wanted to make a really quick comment. Thank you all for the work that you are doing. Um, my comment is in support of the CPA um, application for the fields at Fort River. Um, I am a town council member, and I am also a member of the elementary school building committee. Um, I am here tonight commenting on behalf of myself, however, so I just also did want to make that clear, um, and that I view this as a very essential piece um, in the success of the elementary school building project and the possibility of improving the chances for the debt exclusion override, which will have to be put on the ballot um, in 2023, and will also essentially determine uh, the success of the project itself. 
Um, I also view this as not only just a benefit for the elementary school building project, but for the entire community to have these recreational fields um, be improved uh, because we also are dealing with um, a lack of well-maintained fields that are playable and usable for our community and for our students. Um, so I just wanted to come and voice my support for that application. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Alicia, for all that you do and for taking the time to join us and uh, for your comments. So I'd like to um, reference again for anyone who is an attendee watching this, uh, that if you wish to uh, have a comment to share with us and you wish to speak, uh, please raise your hand so that we can see uh, that you have an interest in speaking. Um, we, we don't know what you are thinking and we can only uh, uh, use the raised hands as an indicator of a desire to speak. I do see some comments that have been made in the question and answer portion. Uh, uh, I did uh, respond and there someone asked how else they might make a comment. So I'm going to read a few comments from community members uh, who uh, are not, whose hands are not raised at present. One is from Meg Gage who spoke earlier and it says, I would like to support Rudy's comments about the playing fields. Uh, that would be the Fort River. Uh, we need to do everything we can to make the elementary school project succeed. Um, another comment here is from Tom Shin, S-H-I-N. My name is Tom Shin and I live on Old Farm Road in Amherst. I'm writing to echo Rudy Perkins' comment in support of CPA funding for supporting the needs of the Fort River Fields as part of the Fort River School Project. I have two children, one at ARHS who attended Fort River and the other still at Fort River who have participated in the after-school ultimate Frisbee programs run at those fields, as well as youth soccer when they were very young. The fields are a great resource for multiple youth and adult athletic leagues. Features such as fencing, lighting, in parentheses, expanding the ability to use the fields at night, end of parentheses, and accessible restrooms slash comfort stations will increase their usage across the community. Uh, thank you, Meg, and thank you, Tom, for your comment. Another comment from Tom Shin. Thanks to the committee for their work and for the opportunity to provide public comment in multiple ways, both audio and written. Um, we have a comment from Diane Wiley, D-Y-A-N, a resident at 120 Pulpit Hill Road where Laura Fitch also lives and indicates. And the comment is, I'm looking for it, forgive me. It was here before, okay. Uh, and the comment is, I am a resident of the co-housing community on Pulpit Hill Road across the street from the CDC housing project. And I believe most of us in the community are very supportive of this initiative in addition to our neighborhood. I think Meg Gage made great points that I agree with. I hope the CPAC, CPAC, our committee, will support it to the greatest extents possible. Uh, I'm gonna look further to see if there are any other written comments here. I'm not seeing them. So I'm not seeing additional hands raised in the audience. Uh, Again, this is a, an opportunity for the community to provide comments, uh, both to the committee members here, but also to community members in attendance. And this is a recorded meeting that others might look at at a later point in time. Um, if anyone in the audience wishes to make a comment on any of the proposals that are before the CPA committee, uh, please raise your hand or if that doesn't work, uh, please feel free to type in a comment as though it were a question. 
Okay. Um, I'm not seeing further uh, individuals wishing to speak. Uh, I do wish to thank everyone who has taken the time to uh, attend the meeting and give us uh, your thoughts and perspectives on the project. We appreciate it very much. It's a component of our decision process along with uh, many other factors. So thank you all. I guess I will end the public hearing portion of this meeting. Uh, I'll do an auctioneer comment going once. <laughs> if you want to make a comment, raise your hand. Going twice. Bid it, bid it, bid it. That's all, folks. So, uh, okay. We're, this concludes the uh, public hearing portion of today's agenda. So uh, that was good to hear from everyone. Um, interestingly enough, uh, we have another agenda item that's titled public comment. How does that distinguish from public hearing? I guess it's a, a technical term that means you can speak on anything related to CPA that doesn't have to be specific to the projects, uh, to the proposals in front of us. Uh, I'd like to open up the floor again if anyone in attendance has a wish to make a public comment. I'll cue the Jeopardy music and give us 15 seconds in case anyone has an answer they're writing down. Okay, I'm not seeing any public comments, although I do see another typing. Uh, a question and answer, it says from Dr. Leslie S. Salisbury, thank you all for the time and listening to us all. Thank you as well. So I will uh, conclude uh, the opportunity for public comment. And we will move on as a committee to the next item on our agenda, uh, which is to approve any outstanding minutes. Now, I'm only aware of one set of minutes that have been sent to us at present, which are from Tim uh, from the 17th. Uh, before we do that, I see a hand raised. Robin? So I just have a, um, I have a couple of comments on the minutes that came in the packet. Okay, those are the minutes of November 17th, is that correct? Uh, I can check, but yeah. Uh, yep, uh, uh, that's correct. Go ahead. Um, so there are just two, two um, items, and I apologize. I will look them up again under personal uh, church. I think the first one was under the. Um, Wildwood Cemetery, there was a reference to uh, this historical commission, which really should be a reference to something called the Secretary of the Interior's Standards for Preservation and Rehabilitation. And then under the barn proposal, uh, there was a reference, representation, uh, reference to documentation being helpful to the historical commission when it really should read um, documentation can assist in creating inventory records of the Mass Historical Commission. So um, if people don't object to those um, adjustments, I can send them off to Sam and we can vote um, as, as, a, as, as I'm suggesting amendments, those two amendments. Um, can you send them to Tim, myself, and Sonia? Sure. Uh, I believe, Tim, you've got the, the primary file, and that's probably the most efficient way to uh, add edits. I don't know uh, if any additional edits have come your way, Tim, since we last communicated via, via email. Have, uh, have you received any additional edits, Tim? No. Okay. Those would be the only ones, so I would appreciate referencing where you had those comments, Robin. Uh, so, great. No problem. Does any does anyone else have any 
comments on Tim's minutes as provided uh, from November 17th. Well, I will assume then, uh, did, did everyone have a chance to look at them? I see hands going up. So uh, I believe then that we can proceed to, uh, we have a motion to approve the minutes from Tim on November 17th. I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. A second. We have a motion on the floor and we have a second to approve the minutes of November 17th as amended. Um, any further discussion? I see no discussion, so we will proceed to a roll call vote. Uh, Sam McLeod, yes, aye. Tim? Aye. Dave Williams? Aye. Matt Kane? Aye. Katie Allen Zobel? Aye. Michelle Lavie? Aye. Robin Fordham? Aye. Um, and Andy is not present, so I see the vote as a seven to zero in favor of approving the minutes. I'm not aware of any additional minutes or drafts that have been provided to us. Uh, um, Sam, yes. wouldn't that vote be seven zero one absent? <clears throat> yes, it would. Okay, just want to clarify that. Thank you. I, I appreciate that as always. <laughs> <laughs> seven zero and one absent as opposed to one abstaining uh uh great um now i don't see any additional minutes uh i'm not aware of any sonia are you aware of us having received any for discussion purposes no okay so we have approved any of the outstanding minutes uh, and we'll anyone who is working on them when the time comes uh you know, send them to Sonia and myself, and uh, it can then be provided to committee members for potential edits. It's nice to take care of those, uh, at least a good portion of them in advance of the meetings. It makes for an easier process. Uh, Tim. Uh, can I suggest maybe it's, I don't know if it's too late, but I did not put a reference to the video or the audio in those minutes. Uh, if Sonia is able to just put that at the end or whatever, maybe we could do that is fine with me. We've already voted them as amended. So I thought we had talked about that in one of the edits I might have sent you. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put it in to oh, the, okay. so I don't have the, the reference. Uh, it seems to be a reasonable proposition mm -hmm. unless anyone has an objection. I'll give it my best shot. How's that? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a, a great suggestion. I don't recall if it was you or Katie, but or both of you, but uh, that certainly wouldn't hurt. There was a while uh, my first year where I had difficulty finding the location of the recordings for the meetings. Of course, now they're obvious to me, they're placed, and for anyone who's attending, uh, you can see them on the Amherst Community Preservation Act page. You go to the town of Amherst, your government, boards and committees, Community Preservation Act. And then on the right hand side, in addition to the agendas and the minutes, you'll see recordings. And it's of all the various meetings, not just this cycle, but going back multiple years. It's quite, quite useful. Uh, I actually refer to it when trying to see how we've conducted our processes in the past. Uh, so your hand is still up, Tim. Do you have another uh, question or comment? No, okay. So I guess we're all set here with the approval of outstanding minutes. And the next item on the agenda is to review financials. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to Sonia and for there, Sean. There, there are no changes in our financials from last week. The uh, updated state match is the only update we've had. I would like to um, bring attention to committee members. I'm not sure if everyone has had an opportunity to look at the emails that would have been sent to them today, but we did receive uh, a, what I would consider an update on the, the balance 
in the Affordable Housing Trust. You had sent the, that to us earlier today, uh, Sonia. Do you happen to have that anywhere uh, on your screen where it could be displayed? I don't. I have okay. to email me my files, and that's not one of the files I sent out. Do we have the ability to share my screen? You or do. I verbally do it as well. That might be just as easy. What do you think? Are we? Yeah, you could just read it, Sam. Yeah. Okay. You're just reading the balance, right? Yes. So earlier, uh, sometime during the past week, we received a uh, statement related to the uh, original proposals, the amount expended, and any encumbrances, encumbrances, excuse me, and the ending available budget, available budget for affordable housing. Um, the amount is in fact $250,000 more than we might have seen five days ago. Uh, and that is reflective of the 250,000 that was awarded, I believe, last cycle. So the current balance of funds available to the Affordable Housing Trust is $612,386.73. $612,386.73. That's the current liquid available balance that's uh, unencumbered, I guess, is the right term to use for it. Uh, so there's a little bit of extra money in the uh, the fund than we might have uh, thought of prior to uh, earlier today. So I'd like to ask the committee members to recognize that and just make a note of it. Uh, it's a, enough that it's a significant portion. Uh, Robin, I see that your hand is up. Yeah, I just wanted to I wanted to confirm the total numbers with my spreadsheet to make sure I'm operating under the right assumption here, the total um, FY24 funding and the total reserve amounts. Sure. Uh, would it be helpful if we brought that on the screen? Um, or, or, or do you want to read them to Sean and to uh, Sonia and maybe they can verbally tell you? We could do I can bring up the well. projection sheet. Hold on. That would be good, I think, for anyone who's paying attention. In the audience. Can you see it? Not, Not yet. yet. We can. Uh, is it possible to enlarge the corners of the uh, spreadsheet so that it would be slightly larger, even though it is reason it's readable if I squint? Um, that's much yeah. better. Yeah, I can't tell what you're seeing, so. So Robin, uh, <laughs> do you have comments or questions on what you're seeing here? Yep, so it's just the $1,911,316.50 is the FY24 amount. And then um, the reserve is 542343. And then the, that? is that right? Oh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> what am I looking 533105. Okay, close. Uh, let's see. Line, number, line, no, line number 11. Yep. Okay, that's what I have. And then um, confirming again that um, 1911000 that um, takes into consideration any debt service. That's the debt service has already been taken care of. We have almost $2 million to spend. Correct? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. So, so to summarize, we have $1,911,316.50 currently available. And separate from that, we have a reserve amount of 533105 that we could vote to remove from reserve from the previous fiscal year cycle. Uh, and the total of those two would be 2444422 Okay, uh, that works. I guess uh, we can remove that chart from our screen. Uh, Sean, I see that your hand is up. Sam, it may be worth updating the committee on the um, the council's vote on the turf project because that connects to some of the debt. I don't know. Did you hang around for the rest of that meeting to so you can update the committee? Uh, I watched it after the fact, but um, it, my understanding is that the 
and and please uh, jump in at any time. My understanding is that the town council uh, has had two votes related to the track and field project. Uh, that's a project that the CPA had authorized 800,000 plus, I believe, uh, for option two or three to reorient the track that would have been in last year's cycle. Um, the initial vote from the town council, they were presented with a request to transfer $900,000 of uh, cash, I guess, from the, the town budget towards additional funding for the project. Um, the initial vote was six to six, which did not pass. And then it was revisited last week. And at that time, the council, after talking about it with a few uh, different motions, voted 13 to zero to authorize the $900,000 from free cash to be added to that project uh, with the recognition that it would be sent back to the school committee or the regional school committee to make determinations on just what method. And that $900,000 was for use with either option two or option three of the athletic field reorientation. Um, that's my understanding of it, Sean. Perhaps you have yeah, additional uh, information to add or- The only thing I want to add is, um, so the CPA vote, which was 800,000 was a debt authorization. And that only moves forward at the regional school committee moves forward with the turf project, which is what the council provided funding for them to do, but still, there's still some other uh, steps that the regional school district has to take in order to ensure they're moving forward with the turf version. So um, I just wanted to call attention to that. We, there's a large project in the debt schedule for that authorization. And if it, they don't move forward with turf, then that would be freedom. Uh, you're referring to the 800,000 that the CPA voted? Yeah, the 800,000 that was approved uh, oh. this past summer, I believe had a specific restriction that it was only for option three. Um, I understand that it was used for reorientation. And uh, so option three is the turf component? Yeah, option three is the reorientation with turf. Okay. Uh, it's, it would be good for us to, uh, it, we don't have to deal with that at this moment, of course, uh, but I, I'm seeing Sonia nod her head earlier, uh, so I, I'll take your word for that. It makes sense, but I'd like for us as a committee to, when we, if it ever comes before us again, to uh, just revisit that to make sure that it was option three. That seems to be, uh, I know it was for reorientation. Uh, Tim. You're mute, Tim. Sean, I don't understand how that affects the debt here on this spreadsheet we just looked at. We currently have debt of 443, 460. So this is um future debt. So it's not, it won't affect this coming year, FY24, but there's debt for that project that would hit in FY25 or FY26 if it moves forward. So it would free you up and it would it would provide more flexibility in the future, depending on what happens. If it does move forward, that, that's debt that will come out of the CPA fund. If it doesn't move forward, then it's it's more flexibility that the CPA fund would have in the future. Sonia, do you remember what year we projected that first payment to potentially start? Um, I think it was 25 at the uh, earliest. Yes, 25. I apologize, I'm wrestling with my one-year-old at the same time as trying to. <laughs> Who's winning? That's uh, it's, uh, debatable right now. So. <laughs> so, but what that means is that if we in any of these projects that we're discussing today, we elect to uh, re suggest we go into further debt, that again would add to the future and it starts mortgaging our future for a better term, right? Yeah, when we look at the debt schedule, we'll show you the things that we're currently paying debt on, but we'll also right. show you two projects that we haven't started paying debt on, but have been approved. And those two projects are the turf um, athletic field at the region and the Jones Library project for the special collections. Those, neither one of those projects have started yet, um, but both were authorized for debt from CPA. So assuming, let's just assume for, so I can get my, we have roughly 
$2 million available this year, including 443 debt. Now, some of that debt will be paid off, but <clears throat> those are two big numbers, the 800,000 and the 1 million that when we get the debt, there's that will have some significant impact, I would imagine, in terms of the future CPA funds. Yeah, no, definitely. It's one of the things when we, when you start diving into it and you look at the individual projects, some of them you may want to, it, it may make sense to borrow for them given the size. You'll want to look at the whole debt schedule and how each of those would right. fit in. See if okay. You with it. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you. Uh, Katie, I see your hand is raised. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to, Sean, I, First of all, you're doing a great job doing two things at once. Um, but I wanted to ask about, um, just so I understand about the turf project, because we voted on a particular option that included artificial turf, you're saying that if the town decides to go forward with that project, but selects, maybe elects to not do artificial turf, the CPA money that we voted on couldn't be used for that. We would have to either re-vote it or revisit it. You'd is have to re-vote re it because, it, and what, what we'll do is we'll send the, lang the vote language out to the committee after so you can see what was voted just to, so it's super clear. Um, okay. but, but my understanding the way it was voted, unless I'm misremembering, is you would have to re-vote it essentially to remove um, that, that requirement and it'd have to go through the whole full process again. Right. Okay. It was, it was contingent on the option three, and it's also in the report, um, the CPA report. Yeah, there was a specific request to make it contingent, I think, by a couple of members on that specific option of the um, Weston and Sampson report. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Robin. Um, I was just going to ask if um, at some point we'll receive uh, a if we could if we could receive a spreadsheet of that um debt service uh, and forgive me if i've received it and i've missed it um so that that you know i mean i i know it's helpful to have it on screen but also when you know you're sitting we're sitting here doing our own deliberations yeah. to kind of play with the numbers send it out. yeah we can send it out tomorrow morning okay. yeah and it is in, in the i believe the first meeting packet but i'll send it out again okay i do see a uh question in the audience from Kathy Shane, and it says, since CPA cannot fund artificial turf, which is correct, uh, can the committee clarify that it is okay for the field to be grass for the field? CPA should be flexible. Um, Sam, we can, I can come to Kathy, but I wouldn't recommend going back and forth through the Q&A with the audience. Yeah. Um, I just don't think it's a good precedent to set, but I can sure. go back with Kathy offline. Sure. Um, we, we can look at the vote that occurred in the past, and uh, I understand what you're saying, Sean. Kathy is our liaison to the council, of course, so she's a distinct member of the audience. Um, but... Uh, you can look and we can gather the vote that we had authorized uh, when we awarded that money in June and provide that uh, for you to see again, Kathy. Uh, so thank you for your comment. So um, any other comments for the moment related to financial updates? I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing any. So we talked about uh, the debt information from Tim's question. And I'd like to just bring up again that the primary change from the previous week is that the current available balance in the Affordable Housing Trust is $612,386, 612386 So that takes care of uh, that agenda item. So we've gone through the, um, I guess the administrative processes. We've heard the public comment. The next item on the agenda uh, is for us to begin discussing and voting recommendations. Um, I'd like to take a two minute break now. It seems like a good time to do so. Uh, 
I've got to step aside for a moment and be right back. So uh, I'm going to have a two minute recess here at 713 uh, and we can all come back in a couple minutes and we'll begin uh, talking about projects and doing our straw rating. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's give it another minute to see if faces appear. So, uh, just want to check to see if David and Katie are able to hear us at this time. I'm here. Okay, we can. That's great. How about you, David? Can you hear us? I hope my taking a two minute delay doesn't delay us too long. Let's give it one more minute. I had a question, okay. Sam. Do we have a. Uh, um time and time on our meeting tonight like a kind of uh, general what we're generally aiming for it's listed from six to nine six to nine um, okay thank you but but that's not mandatory we can end it however we wish based on the agenda and how we're how we're thinking okay. uh, but the the listed time is six to six to nine i'd like to wait to make sure that um David's present as well when we get to the uh, straw ratings portion. <clears throat> okay. Um, it's looking like everyone's here. Um, so what we do at this point uh, is we go through the projects and we just provide a number uh, the number being our general thought on a given project or a given proposal from one to five. Uh, it's not a vote. It's simply an indication of our thoughts on it to help frame future discussions on the proposals. Uh, different individuals might have their own reasoning for ratings. Uh, 
I often will have threes for proposals that uh, I want to talk further about and or if there are budgetary considerations. But what we're going to do is go through the um, proposals one at a time and call on members to provide their straw poll rating, uh, not a vote. Uh, Andy did provide me his uh, numbers, so I'll be able to uh, provide his uh, straw poll numbers as well. So it seems to me to make sense for us to proceed. Now, Sonia, you have a nice uh, display here, including uh, a reference to administration uh, and all the other projects. Now, that's not one that we would be providing any rating for, I don't believe, correct? Can't hear you, Sonia. No, you don't. You don't have to rate. Right, thank you, Sean. So, um, will you be able to enter the uh, ratings, Sonia? I can. Yes. Okay. Very good. Well, if somebody can, so uh, let's go one at a time, uh, starting with the first one, which is uh, the Amherst Affordable Housing trust funding for affordable housing development uh, listed as a proposal amount of 500,000. So the names are across the top and- um, Sam? Yes. So sorry to interrupt, it's Katie. Um, I just wanna, uh, we've talked about the straw poll being one to five. Yep. Right? And I just, I feel like I'm, I'm apologize to my fellow committee members if it sounds like a broken record, but I just want to, it's helpful for me to make sure that we're understanding what a one is. Oh, I mean, sure. I think everyone has a different view of it. And so okay. I, I don't know if it's worth talking that through, or if just to say, when you say, you know, a one to, to me is not to be funded, but it might feel something different to somebody else. So just understanding that is helpful to me versus what a three means. Okay. You know, a five for me means fully fund and go forward, but for somebody else, it just might be, I think it's a great something to discuss. So I just, I don't, with new members, I just want to make sure we're in a similar just so I understand where other people are coming from. And if, and if, if I'm the outlier here, then feel free to proceed. <laughs> well, it's a scale from one to three rating, one being low, five being high. Uh, we don't have definitions associated with, but five is the highest rating you can give to a proposal in terms of being in favor of it. So being in favor sort of merit, but maybe folks feel differently about um the amounts or so are we are you asking us to then just be doing a straw poll on the merit can i jump in for a second sam uh sure Robin. i just wanted to make a quick suggestion what i was going to do is give my uh what's what i was going to suggest is to give your number and extremely brief reason so for example if i say four it might be because i don't know the level of funding so i would say four question about the level of funding. Three warrants further discussion for me. And that way you give your number, give a brief tiny bit of information on what it's based on, and then everybody kind of knows. And we're we're going to talk about everything later, but really yeah. one is low, not really in favor of it at all. <laughs> Five is very high, very much in favor. Individuals have their own ratings. We don't have pure definitions on it because there are in fact the two variables the variables of merits and the variables of budgeting. We have not separated those two. Uh, I tend to, uh, if I like a project but cannot, uh, am uncertain about the funding, I may not give it a five. I may give it a four instead. That's how I do it. Uh, if I don't have any disputes with the funding or anything else, I'll give it a five. But the main thing is, as long as every individual who's providing their ratings is consistent within their own process, then it will be fine because we'll come out with numbers on the end that reflect the averages with consistency. So I don't know if that helps or not, uh, Katie, uh, but it's similar to what we did the last two years. Uh, one, not in favor of it. Five, very much in favor of it. 
we're not voting on the budgets at this point in time. We're just trying to get a general indication and anyone who wishes to adjust their merit-based rating based on the budget can do so up or down. I, I guess that's kind of the best I can communicate. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm going to probably be a broken record on it, but so I, I apologize for that, but appreciate the chance to just have a conversation. I think Michelle had um, her hand up, so maybe there's more. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, so um, I did, I think, a little differently because I used Andy's spreadsheet, which wasn't numeric. It was unlikely to a certain. So there was, I don't have any ones because there is, it is partially merit and partially budget based. Um, so it seems like it's a little different ranking system that when other people are talking about. Um, so I guess that's just where I'm coming from. I'm not sure if anyone else used this sheet, but it was pretty, it was great. It was a little complicated. So there's a lot of ratings. Um, they're not whole numbers. So I'm rounding up to give a full number, but that's that's the route I took. They'll need to be between one and five, whatever number you're providing. So if your scale on the rating system that you're using within the spreadsheet is higher, I would adjust it or look he at has an adjustment so it is one okay. to five it comes out okay. one to five i'm just saying that it, i think that the ratings uh criteria are a little different than what other yep. people have mentioned okay uh any other questions or comments from folks here uh sean i see that your hand is up yeah i'll just echo what you said stan which i don't you don't have to worry about the exact ratings at this point. I think it's Sam mentioned it. This is just to get a sense of where people are at. But as long as you had your own rationale, you're going to discuss everything in a, in a second. So I wouldn't get too caught up on the exact numbers. It's just to it's just to give the committee like where the majority of the discussion should be focused. If everyone says something's a five and everybody says something's a, a one, those are ones you might discuss less than the ones that are the threes and the fours and the and, twos. And um, we can change are this, these yeah, ratings are not fine. votes. We can adjust them and be influenced based on discussions of others. This is a starting point for discussion. So yeah, this is meant to be a quick snapshot of where people's initial yeah. impressions are, and then you'll discuss it more. So um, if we can get the charts, the, the spreadsheet back up that's visible to the committee members, that would be helpful. I'm not able to see it at present. I see a screen with all of our faces. Oh. I, I can see the screen. Okay. I can see it. Okay. Um, see it. Yeah. Everyone can see it. Yep. So the first one that we'll uh, provide numbers for is the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. And we'll start by going from left to right on the uh, columns. So, Michelle, if you're able to give a one through a five on that. Yep, four. four. Uh, Robin? Four. I have Andy's um, ratings on my phone here, so I'm going to speak on Andy's behalf. Uh, he has a four. I have a three. Uh, Matt? Three. Uh, Tim. I have a five for the uh, program for the funding, a three for because I'm questioning the amount. So I will average to four. Okay. Uh, David. Five. I believe I heard a five. Yes. Uh, Katie. Four. Okay. Um, we can move to the next one, which is the Ball Lane Community Homes. Um, I'll start with Robin. A four. Andy is a five. I am a three. Uh, Matt. Four. Tim. Five. Dave. Four. Katie? Four. Uh, Michelle? Three. Okay. The next one is the East Street School. I will start with Andy, and Andy has a four. I have a four. Matt? 
Ball. Tim? Um, I'm going to give it a five, but when we get to discussion, I'm going to suggest we debt that program. Okay. Um, five. Five. Katie? Four. Michelle? Four. Robin? Four. Okay. Rental subsidy program, phase two. We will start with me. I have a four. Matt? One. Um, Tim? Five for one year, four for the three years. So what do we do? Four. You choose. <laughs> well, we'll go four. Okay. Uh, David? Three. Katie? Five. Michelle? Four. Four. Robin? Uh, five. That's the rental subsidy, right? Correct. Okay. And Andy has a four. Uh, next, uh, those are the affordable housing, community housing programs. Next are the um, historic preservation. We have the conservation of five paintings by Mabel Loomis Todd. I will start with Matt. Five. Tim. Five. And I'm going to suggest when we get that they that comes out of reserves. Uh, David? Four. Katie? Five. Michelle? Five. Robin? Five. Andy has a five. And I have a five. <laughs> That's pretty high rate. OK. Uh, Dickinson Farmhouse roof renovation. This is the uh, house in Wildwood. Now, uh, did they not uh, change their proposal to be 97,000? Am I missing yes. something there? No, they did. So we'll want to adjust that column total to reflect. Um, I don't recall if there was change in that or not, but if we can make a note that the budgeted amount is 97,000 and some change. I have it on my desktop somewhere. Uh, I think it's $97,020 actually. Yeah, right there. <clears throat> so we will start with uh, Tim on this. Four. Um, David. Three. Katie. Four. Michelle. Four. Robin. Five. Andy has a four. I have a four. Uh, Matt. Two. Matt has a two. Uh, okay, so we have gone through those. Uh, the historic barn and outbuilding assessment program. Uh, this is the um, budget amount at 15 at present. We can talk about details related to things later. The current question is uh, general interest in the uh, proposal. Um, starting with David. Four. David has a four. Katie? Two. Katie has a two. Uh, Michelle? Three. Michelle has a three. Robin? I'm a little biased. Five. Okay. <laughs> Andy has a one. I have a three. Uh, Matt? Three. And Tim? Three. Okay. Next is the preparation of preservation restrictions for CPA funded projects. Uh, again, a general uh, question on interest in it. We can talk about details related to it as we 
talk about the pro proposals later. Uh, I will start with Katie. Three. Michelle. Five. Robin. Five. Andy has a four. I have a three. Uh, Matt. Two. Tim. Four. David. Four. Okay. Next is the Preserving Zion Church. That's the North Amherst Church. Now, there is a different dollar amount on this proposal as well. My understanding is they're asking for 158700 Does that match uh, everyone else's understanding? They had altered their initial request to yeah. ask for uh, doing the soffits uh, and the roof, the, the more urgent aspects of it. So we will start with Michelle. Four. Robin. Four. Andy has a four. I have a, I have a four. Uh, Matt. Four. Tim. Um, I have a four and I have a question regarding, this is one where I would like a lot more information. I'm not sure when we get to the point where we can request the applicant to give us more information. So, okay. uh, because we're going to discuss all these projects further, right? Perfect. So are. now I'll just put four. Yeah, these are just straw okay. rating polls. These are Fair not enough. votes. These are to help us, you know, talk about things. Okay. Uh, David. Four. And Katie. Four. Wow. That's a unanimous one. Uh, South Congregational Church Steeple Restoration and Preservation. Now, um, they had adjusted it already, I believe, to the 233. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I believe, Robin, you go first. Four. Uh, Andy has Oops. a four. Uh, Sam, you're putting them in the wrong columns, or whoever is doing it. Then we can wait a second here. Wait the, a second. The first one, Michelle, should be uh, blank. Yeah. So Andy was a four. Uh, and I am a five. Uh, Matt? Five. Tim? Uh, I am a five, and again, suggesting it come out of reserves. Yep. David? This is the South Congregational Church. Not able to hear you. Uh, David Williams, can you hear us? Can everybody else hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, I hear you. Do you hear me? Yeah, no, we did not. We do now. So we're asking for a rating. Uh, it's We're going on the South Congregational Church steeple and restoration preservation. So uh, what's your number for that project? Four. Four. Okay. Uh, Katie? Four. Okay. And Michelle? Four. Okay. Conservary, conservation area improvements. Uh, and it's listed as a budget of 100,000. Uh, we will start with Andy. And Andy's rating on this proposal is a five. Uh, I am a three. Uh, Matt? Three. Tim? Five. David. Four. Katie. Four. Michelle. Five. Robin. Four. Okay. Next on the list is the uh, Crocker Farm Elementary School Playgrounds. Uh, we don't have to get into, you know, they 
indicated flexibility on it, but let's see what our ratings are on the proposal. Um, I think we started with Andy last time, if I'm correct. So that would be me. I have a three. Matt? Two. Tim? One. David? Three. Katie? Three. Michelle? Three. Robin? Two. Andy has a four. Next is the Fort River um, Community Recreation Fields. Oh, and wait a minute. I'm sorry. What was the last one we were voting on? The last one we were voting on was the Crocker Farm oh, I'm Elementary sorry. School Playgrounds. Do you My wish to adjust I have a three. your vote? Yeah, adjust that to a three. Thank you. Okay. okay. So now we're discussing the um, Fort River Community Recreation Recreational Fields project. Uh, we will start with Tim. One. David. Uh, five. Katie. Three. Michelle. Four. Robin. Two. Andy has a two. I have a three. Uh, Matt. Three. Okay. <clears throat> Next is the War Memorial Bathhouse Preliminary Design. This is the design, not the improvements. Um, and we will start with David. Uh, three. Katie. Uh, the design, I have uh, four. Michelle. Three. Robin. Can you hear us, Robin? Oh, I can hear you now, yep. Um, the design, I have, can you can hear me? Yes. Okay, design, I have a five. Okay. Uh, Andy has a three. I have a three. Matt. Four. Tim. Three. Okay. Next is the War Memorial Pool improvements. These are the uh, improvements, not the design. And we will start with Katie. I have a three. Michelle? Three. Robin? One. Andy has a three. I have a three. Uh, Matt? I had a five for that one. Okay. Uh, Tim? Four. David? Three. Katie. I, I think I'm there, right? Uh, you, you are awaiting yeah. your your uh, vote on, or your, not your vote, your straw poll number for the War Memorial. Well, she did was, you go first? Yeah, yes. yeah, oh. it's there. It's there okay. as three, yeah. That would be uh, user error from the chair. Uh, okay. All good. So we have gone through the list to get general numbers. We have not discussed details related to the projects nor budgetary amounts. Uh, we seem to have a range that is perhaps tighter than in previous years. Um, it looks like the, the lowest number on the ratings is 2.8 and the highest is 4.9 followed thereafter by 4.4 so it's a tight uh it's a tight group um do we have the ability to show both the chart 
and the individuals. I can see the chart, but I'm, maybe that's me. Let me hang on a second. All right, now I can do it. Bear with me here. So let's all look for a little bit at this. Um, can we see what the current total is of the projects as requested by the applicants um, with the adjustments for the uh, Zion Church and the Dickinson uh, Farmhouse Building? 8147, 119. Now, does that include any of the debt service? Yes, the debt service is all here. Okay. And we, the budgeted amount that we have mm -hmm. in terms of our general understanding as we discuss things, we have 1.9 plus the, if we included the reserves, 2.4. Now, is the budgeted reserve a component? That is to say, does that get deducted from that 1.9? It's already been deducted, correct? Right. Okay. So <clears throat> that budgeted reserve, it appears on the left-hand side there within the 8147. But in fact, um, that's already been deducted in our uh in arriving at our 1.911 million, is that correct? Correct. All right, so we're actually looking at a um, an amount under discussion that would be $443 less than the 81, is that correct? Um, 443 is debt. It's debt, but can, can we think, get back to the previous screen? maybe just sum the actual proposals and don't sum the debt into it. Essentially correct, because the debt has already been uh, identified, if I understand it correctly. Let, let me ask it again. The 8147, 8,147,000, appearing on line number 29, column J. Uh, if I understand correctly, Sonia, that includes the debt components for rows 20 through 28, is that right? Right. Okay. But down below on line number 39, where it displays a total of 1,911,000, that number is arrived at after already having subtracted that 443. Yes. All right. So Matt's comment makes sense to me uh, that can we see what the total is of the proposals without that debt portion. Um, that is to say, the project lines and perhaps including the uh, administrative request of 25,000 from lines three through lines 15. Right. Yeah. So you have 7.7 available for new projects using the 443,000 for the already committed debt. Right. So if I understand Correct. what you're saying, Holly, you know, we're talking 7703659 on line number 30? Yes. It's available for new projects. Yes. Very no, good. that's not available. That is the new that's project. The that's the request. request. I'm sorry, the requests for new no. projects. Correct. Wonderful. Thank you. And Correct. I have to say, uh, Sonia, Sean, and Holly, that uh, the presentation of the information is very helpful to us, and it has been every year. Uh, it's a lot of complicated information, and to put it in a way that we can see it in real time and understand it is uh, certainly appreciated by me and I assume by others. Uh, Robin, I see that your hand is up. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask um, if because we have these two uh, mil over a million dollar asks, which essentially um, would have one of them would have to be bonded and the other one if it wasn't bonded would wipe out pretty much everything, almost everything that we have to spend. If we can somehow find a way to kind of move the bond numbers over so that we are looking at the number that we can actually spend in FY24, if everybody agrees that those two big million plus projects would essentially be bonded by this committee, not funded in FY24. Um, I, I think it would be helpful first for us to go through the projects and talk about them. Okay. before we start moving the numbers around. Okay. Um, 
so, Sonia, can you, and thank you, Robin, for the suggestion that might be, you know, helpful as we get to that point. Can you display the screen so that we can see all of the projects? Yes, that, that's better. So um, there, there are multiple variables here on each project. There are the, uh, the merits of it, what we think about it, the dollar amount that's asked. And in addition, there may be uh, comments related to the uh, implementation or adjustments to the actual work proposal. Uh, and you know, our intent as we go through here is to be deliberate, not to rush it, and to just talk about each one of the projects uh, in sequence with the issues that arise uh, to any of the committee members. Um, before we start going through them, uh, I see a hand up from Katie. Yes, sorry, Sam. I just, I, I wanted to clarify, I heard in some of the comments today, and I thought I had written this down after reading about, um, it says on, on the chart in front of us, it says $3 million for Fort River, but I had heard um, 2.6 or 2.8 or something like that just for the fields. Is that, was that an altered request or is that, am I imagining? I don't believe it's been altered, but it was alluded to that there is a distinction in their request between the fields component, which was 2.4 million and okay. some amount. Yeah, 2.4, uh, right. And then the amount that was for the lighting and the comfort station. So uh, they didn't they didn't change their request. I'm not aware. I don't think they I, I don't think they changed their request, but they they're saying you can you can approve just the fields for 2.4 and leave the other Got things it. till a future year. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you wish. I didn't want, I just, when I looked at the chart, I didn't know if that needed to be adjusted. Thank you. Not, not as it. of yet. They, they, uh, the distinction there is that the um, lighting and the comfort station could conceivably be addressed at a later time because they would not be uh, an immediate portion of an approved school project. Because once March comes around, yeah, um, I, this is I going out to the public. Yeah. Uh, uh, the you. other comment uh, related to what you brought up, Katie, is that the school committee did recommend the that project and another one, but they recommended it for the fields portion only. Uh, the school committee recommended the 2.4. Uh, so thank you for raising that topic because it's uh, it's an important one. So um, lots of different proposals here. It's great that. Uh, we have so many um, so many things before us, really. It makes our task difficult, but it's really good to see that the town and the community is so engaged and there's so many different uh, possibilities. Uh, this is what we, uh, this is what the program is designed for. Uh, this is the intent behind the origins of the CPA program. And it's certainly nice to see from my perspective. Um, I'm going to get us, going on the topics, but before I do that, I see another committee hand. So I'd like to allow us all to uh, to speak. So Tim, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to suggest, uh, in my opinion, there are three of these projects that have a real time sensitivity. The uh, Mabel Todd paintings, uh, that they'd love to get going on that project. Uh, the um, which are the oh the steeple and the, the both churches have the emergency kind of emergency funding and at least when I did the math we could take if we approved of all those three three projects with the numbers you see on that spreadsheet sheet they could all come out of this year's reserve which would allow us to just debate new projects for FY24. So maybe one suggestion might be that we talk about that, whether or not we feel comfortable with that dipping into this year's or the existing reserves to fund those projects, get them off the table, and then we move on to the other projects. I think it's a, a topic to discuss, um, but before we uh, deliberate on those types of issues. I just want to make everybody aware that that would be a fiscal year 23 ask. So it would be completely taken off of the 24 roles and it would be a separate report, separate um, council uh, 
public forum, separate everything. So it would all have to fit into the schedules of the council, the finance committee. But it could be done. There could it could be, be done. It's yeah. just I'm just informing it's it's yeah. work. Uh, Sean, do you have a comment related to what Tim said? Yeah, I, I think Sam, what you're trying to say is we should start with the merits of the projects before going to how to fund them. And I agree Correct. with I think Tim, your point about the reserves is right. If you choose to use that reserve though, then you don't have a reserve anymore. Um, and you would have to take money out of this year's money if you wanted to create that reserve. Otherwise, you would not have a reserve going forward. So just keep in mind, if you do use that reserve, then you lose it unless you're going to set aside money, which obviously there's not a lot of flexibility this year to set aside more. Um, so you just want to make sure the merit of the projects warrant kind of losing that reserve going forward. True. Okay. I, I agree with that. But I think I would like to have that discussion at some point, whether or not this is the point your point about the time sensitivity is exactly right. I think that's one of the reasons why we have that reserve for projects that are urgent. So I, I think you're right. right. I mean, that's in part why I brought that up. Okay, well, thanks. I appreciate it, Tim. And, uh, you know, it's fine. We're, we're, you know, we're moving forward. There's no urgency per se in our discussions, although it's good for us to be productive as we go forward. Uh, it's I, very... If I can just chime in here, I think it's fine to go off cycle. And I, I would think the committee, the committee would want some standard for what you think is urgent. So that going forward with these, there should be a definition of what the committee feels mm -hmm. urgent is before we set a precedent. Uh, th thank you, Sonia. Um, so, uh, you know, valid, Topic, Tim, uh, I had written comments adjacent to certain projects that had an element of, that had requested, that is to say that it had been brought up by the applicants themselves, whether or not we would consider that capacity. I think that the South Church handled that themselves by uh, using their own 10% contribution to fund the engineering, but we can talk about that. But I agree, uh, Sean summarized my, my thoughts. Uh, earlier when he said that uh, it would be good for us to talk about the merits and or issues, in, including whether or not we think the budget's too high for our interest for any particular project, not in the context of which ones we can afford uh, and, and not in the con. We're going to talk about each project. We're not going to allocate money for it, but um, Let's look at them one project at a time. And some of us may have voted lower because we think there's sufficient money already available, or maybe the whole project doesn't need to get done. Uh, but let's go one at a time. Usually, uh, you know, what this does is it gives us an opportunity to hear each other uh, and learn uh, different perspectives. Uh, so I'd like for us to, um, I'm not going to talk about the administration amount. We're familiar with that. Uh, I won't do that at this point in time, but let's begin talking about the affordable housing, uh, Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust request. Uh, it's a request for $500,000. Um, I'll start by saying my thoughts on why I gave it a three. I, I appreciate what the all the work that the Affordable Housing Trust does. Uh, they're kind of the uh, incubator for uh, some of these projects that occur. Uh, but I also recognize the distinction between uh, incubation and a project that's in hand ready to go. Um, and when I'm tasked with looking at different proposals in front of us, uh, I might have given the current balance of $600,000 that the trust has from CPA money already in their hand, ready to use, uh, that influenced my thoughts on it based upon, um, I guess, urgency of need. Uh, and that was how I looked at it. I My own thought is that if we ran into uh, funding issues, uh, this would be one I would consider uh, having a lower amount for my opinion, um, but everybody has their own thoughts related to it. Um, in terms of the general proposal, does anyone have comments related to uh, the affordable housing trust? Sam, do you want to 
call on us in order again so we can just give our comments or pass would that be um, a we can we can do it that way. Yeah, that might be a good way just to uh, ensure thoroughness. Um, and I will move quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's fine. So I gave my comments. So uh, we'll go sequentially across. Uh, if you have any comments, just quickly or whatever you want to say, uh, Matt. Uh, my reasoning was pretty similar to um, Sam's with respect to this this item. I just also just like to say in general, um, my my theory about rating these is um, it's it, not just whether or not I like the project, but also whether I think the CPA funds is the appropriate um, way to, for those projects to be funded versus at some other funding source. Okay, uh, Tim, any comments? Uh yeah, my, I, my feeling is that we should fund less in this regard because I they the, the applicant themselves said that uh, we should put more emphasis on the existing. We're hearing, excuse me, Tim, we're hearing uh, someone in the background. Sean, might that be you? Hey, just because I have kids doesn't mean it's me, but that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a speculation. Okay. I left the door open. Uh, I don't know if there's a microphone mute. Uh, Great, Tim. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. That's why I interjected. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, my feeling is that the applicant themselves said that if we ever had tight dollars, they would suggest we put the money, our, our resources into the existing proposals as opposed to their piggy bank, if you will. Uh, now, just as a reminder, the Ball Lane proposal is using as one of its source of funds 250 from the Housing Trust. So that's going to eat into that 612, by the way. Uh, but I think we could get along with less. That's why I gave it a rating of four. Uh, David, any comments on the Affordable Housing Trust? Can you hear me? It's David. Yes. Uh, my comment when we talk about the housing trusts is several weeks ago, the other David, David um, Zomek, made a comment that um, he felt that it, what I heard was the housing trusts needed to work a lot closer with the town of Amherst. I think I'm correct in saying this. In the planning and um, their initiatives, I have not heard or did not hear anyone else make any comments about that. And what I took from that was the housing, affordable housing trust. Um, probably had not not working with the town had not taken advantage of some opportunities that may be there and the town of Amherst is in a position to assist and support. Now in making those comments, um, I'm supporting or will support the Amherst Housing, uh, Affordable Housing Development and the trust in the initiatives that they are involved in. Now, I don't know whether I misinterpret something that was said by uh, David Zomak or not. And I don't know whether he's listening. Um, and yes. I and, saw and, him in the audience earlier. I'm not sure if he's here now. And the question, did I hear something that no one else heard? <laughs> um, I heard something similar to what Tim heard, which was that uh, the Affordable Housing Trust is in favor of most all of the housing projects. Uh, and I also heard uh, <clears throat> that some of the other proposals do seek to utilize affordable housing trust funds. Um, beyond that, I, I didn't, I'm not certain what you were referencing, but I gather uh, your 
disposition towards the projects based on what you said. Um, my okay. wait a minute, sorry. my no, suggestion no, is um, a suggestion would be the question or concerns that I raise um, probably. Um, David need to be involved to respond, not unless uh, Sonia or either Sh uh, Sean uh, is able to respond to the concerns that I mentioned. Is there is there a specific question? The specific question was working with the town of Armories to. Uh, accomplish the initiative that they want to move forward with. And what I heard, there had not been, um, we were, they're asking for money, but they have not been working with the town to move forward to gather the funding or for the projects that they would like to do. Hmm. Um, Dave, this is Katie. I I did the notes for I think the meeting you're talking about the minutes and what I think I heard was that they work very closely together, but that Dave offered to circle back to us with sort of more of a prioritization of all the different um, projects sort of, you know, from the town's perspective, but it's it sounds to me like over the years and what he said was that they work very, very closely together to accomplish um you know the purchasing of um and, and working with develop to develop properties um but i i don't think we've heard back i could be wrong in the flood of emails we got this week from sonia that i don't think we've seen any um prioritization and, and i can echo that um with dave not being here i'm sure you know he'll yeah. okay. the next meeting can weigh in but um i think i would say my knowledge is that they work very close together and i think both sort of depend on each other. Um, you know, Dave's staff, uh, Dave has a staff person who is the liaison for the, the housing trust and helps support them a little bit. Um, and a lot of the projects that have come up recently have been a partnership like the Belchertown Road and, and the East Street project was a partnership. Um, so I think I think what you've described is correct is that, it, that his comments I think were meant to be that it's a partnership and they work closely together, but um, we can certainly get a clarification from Dave uh, for the next meeting. Thank you, Sean. Uh, that's my understanding as well, uh, Katie and Sean, that they do work close, closely together, but it may well be that uh, there was a reference, as Katie indicates, towards if they were going to provide any further comments on all four of the projects as opposed to general support. Um, so, Katie, uh, any thoughts or comments on the Affordable Housing Trust proposal? Well, I am fully in favor of giving as much as we can to the trust to do, there's lots of projects. There was something in the paper yesterday about another project at the BFW and um, what you said, Sam, about it's the ball lane, um, supporting ball lane. And so I don't think we have the ability to do 500. So I would suggest uh, a, a lesser amount, but, but something. Okay, um, Michelle. Um, yeah, I'm on the same page with maybe a lesser amount, but um, I, my support is that they're, you know, shepherding and supporting projects that are happening in Amherst that need support and are already started and providing emergency funding, such in COVID um, rental situations. I think that's direct impact to the residents of Amherst and projects within Amherst. Okay. Uh, Robin? Um, fully in support. Um, my floor was just for a varying level. And I think the point that um, one or two of these other projects is gonna draw their fund down, it would be an argument for granting them at least that amount so that they stay levelly funded. Okay, uh, Andy's not here. He indicated he would uh, be here for our next meeting. There's a chance he might make it to a little bit of this one, but not likely. Um, and I already spoke on this. So, okay, great. Um, Next project on the list is uh, Ball Lane Community Homes. Since I spoke first on the last one, I'll start with uh, Matt. Okay. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, 
So I think that these projects both, I, I'm not really sure that I can separate that well, my thinking on Ball Lane versus East Street. I mean, obviously they're different in that Ball Lane is for um, houses to purchase, whereas East Street is houses for rental. Um, but uh, in both cases, uh, these are projects that I think um, the town is trying to push forward. And I think the CPA should support the town moving forward on these types of projects. Um, uh, it's going to be expensive to build 500 units. I mean, we're looking at 750,000 CPA funds on this project to build um, 20 units. Um, plus another 250,000 from the um, affordable housing trust. So a million dollars to build 20 units. So it's a town contribution in this case of uh, $50,000 per unit, um, which is pretty significant. Um, if you consider that was 500 units at 50,000, that's quite a lot of millions of dollars that's gonna to take to get there. Um, but, uh, I think this is just the sort of thing that we have to go down and we have to anticipate that it's going to cost in that ballpark to um, to get this done, whether the town gives land or whether the town makes a cash contribution as in this case. Okay. Um, Tim. I don't have any other comments other than to say that uh, 750 takes a big chunk out of the amount of money we have to spend. So potentially we may have to fund a little less than 750, although a worthy project. And I'm going to still keep hoping for the 750 funding allocation. Um, thank you, uh, Katie. Oh, excuse me, David, David. Excuse me, David. David Williams. Any comments on Ball Lane? Can you hear me? Can Sam. anyone hear me? Sam. Yes. You know, listening to the conversation and all of our discussion, I, um, I guess the town, or I think last year we had something, had a discussion about prioritizing uh, projects, but uh, affordable housing, uh, as is, we have heard tonight from a number of individuals, heard from town officials, that um, this is a, a uh, uh, appears to be one of the top projects or the needs of the town of Amherst. And uh, CPA is in a position to provide that support. And as someone mentioned a few moments ago, we are not going to be able to, at this particular time, fund all of the projects that we have. But when we look at the priorities, not necessarily the committee, but also the priorities of the town and, and the council, uh, affordable housing is one of them. It may be on the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, Katie. Yeah, I'll say ditto to Dave's and Matt's comments um, and hope we can fund both of the projects. I know we're talking about ball lane right now, but as you know, as, as much as possible um, in this year. Okay. Uh, Robin? Oh, no, excuse me, uh, Michelle. So um, my my three was because uh, this one does, I mean, this is very admirable project. Like I like the siting, I like all the premise. It doesn't prioritize Amherst residents. And, you know, I heard someone talking about a queue of people wanting to get in, but um, without that, I end a 15 year cap on, well, a 15 year to market housing. I don't see a sustainable affordability being offered here. It's sort of a different model 
than affordable housing in Amherst in any kind of perpetuity or anything. That, and this is sort of an aside, but um, you know, given my role in the Conservation Commission, a big part of this and a lot of the comments was connectivity to greenways and trails. And we received the trail map, which is a bunch of informal trails, which are actually unauthorized trails through wetlands connecting to Puffer's Pond. So I would just say that if we're going to consider this highly, also think about the impacts on the natural resources, the wetlands and Puffer's Pond and Mill River and all those trail systems that the town is then going to have to bring up to, to spec so that there's not any further damage to our wetland resources and the water quality in this pretty sensitive area. Thank you. Um, Robin? Um, yeah, I'm uh, very supportive of this project. Um, I see affordable housing as such a critical crisis point issue right now. And if we don't move forward quickly, we'll never get forward. Um, I did want to ask uh, at some point if Michelle could just comment on um, uh, the public's concerns about environmental issues specifically related to contaminants and um, my assumption is that there's sufficient uh, state and uh, regulation um, to protect against um, any bad outcomes there, but it would be helpful to at some point have just uh, hear, hear the word from the Conservation Commission that, that, that whether or not that's something that's an issue that we should be concerned about or whether it's uh, there are safeguards in place so that those issues raised by the public can be understood and been addressed. And um, the only other thing I was going to say is that with this and the next um, project, I'm really unclear about what the minimum need is from these organizations. Um, so that would be helpful to know what 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 the minimum um, ask uh, that we could start with as a number with if we we're going to be doing adjusting um, um, to go from. Uh, thank you, Robin. If you have things to add or in the future, Michelle, feel free to uh, respond or if the Conservation Commission has any comments relating to what Robin raised, you know, let us know. Not necessarily now, it could be next meeting or whatever. Um, Andy's not here, uh, so I'll speak my thoughts on uh, Ball Lane. I, I'm torn on this project. I think that the glaring need in Amherst is one of uh, home ownership affordability, that it's a market that makes it very difficult for families to move into. Uh, but associated with that is the uh, recognition that there's a limited number of homes in terms of how many units might exist um, the I gave it a three because of the overall dollar amount issues that we face as a committee. Uh, and I biased it slightly uh, one one notch lower than the East Street School based on the volume of units. But the, the other issue that arises in my mind related to Ball Lane, uh, the flip side of the home ownership uh, <clears throat> issue is that excuse me, um, it, it's private owned for 15 years, but, you know, it would be preferable from my standpoint for there to be a longer time frame or an automatic upon sale for it to kick back to the next buyer so that it's a continuing cycle. There's an option for the town after 15 and 30 years, um, but, it's essentially providing funding for housing for private individuals and families, uh, but these are not necessarily families that reside in Amherst. There, there's a, uh, my understanding of the prioritization is that it's a state pool uh, that it's, and if I'm incorrect, but I did ask this question of the uh, project folks, and I don't, I believe that the only way we can have it be a project that um, prioritizes as a top end Amherst residents as being in the pool is to have this go through the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's what I heard mm -hmm. when I asked 
the uh, applicants. And that was the same question that arose with the ball, excuse me, with the E Street and uh, uh, Wayfinders project. But it's a lot of money and it may not be prioritizing Amherst residents. It does prioritize uh, those who are in need and who we would like to have be able to purchase affordability in Amherst. But I, in weighing the different affordable housing projects, I took into account the number of units and the duration of the product of the project. And my understanding of the duration of this project is that it's 15 years and or possibly 30 years if the town uh, comes in with a different uh, um, uh, proposal. So that's how I looked at it. And, and it's a very large ask, as are many of these projects. Uh, they're all, it, it would be great for us to be able to wave a wand and have all, everything occur, but we do have limited funds. So each of us has to try to come up with our own way of looking at them uh, and prioritize them. And that's how my mindset has worked on this. Um, I do see a hand up from Robin. Robin? Yeah, I just had a quick question to make sure that I understand the prioritizing of Amherst residents or not. My understanding is that um, not prioritizing Amherst residents is an effort to get more diverse populations who have historically been excluded from being able to live in Amherst into Amherst. That if you draw heavily on an Amherst population, you will not end up diversifying our homeownership population because so many um, people of different backgrounds are kind of kept out just by the basis of how expensive it is already. Is that, is that a correct understanding? Does anybody want to? My, my understanding is that um, in order to be a part of the program, that they aren't in a position to prioritize any local municipality, that it has to be open for the state. I may be wrong. I will read this proposal further, but I believe the lottery system is one that uh, by design within the program that this is affiliated with, the primary funders and backers of it, uh, they have their parameters with the right. goals that you suggested, and they don't um, they don't place the local municipality on top, of, you know, one level right. above that goal. Right, uh, but that yeah, but that that is that is basically the the goal of not prioritizing local residents. Um, yeah, I don't know. The objective, I should say. Well, it, it's the reality of it. It's what the it's what their parameters are. And if Amherst had different uh, economic demographic mixes, uh, I don't know uh, that it would impact that parameter that exists with this proposal. The proposal is such that they look at different. They they have an objective in mind, and that objective is best served from the backers. Of the program to not have a local, um, a local uh, measurement affiliated with it, but uh, the capacity exists for a local prioritization of individuals who fit the same categories of groups that are desired to be met, primarily economic, uh, and the economic factor tends to um, meet the diversity goals, but. Um, <clears throat> I believe that municipalities have the capacity through the Zoning Board of Appeals to request that. It then has to get approval, uh, both from the organization and the state. Uh, but the local, uh, any such request would not alter the underlying requirements of meeting the criteria that exists on the statewide level. Yeah. Yeah, so it would be, it would be families yeah. and individuals that still meet the criteria, sure. yeah. but it's not something that has been presented to us, uh, and it would require a few steps that may or may not fly, for lack of a better term. Uh, but I'm simply explaining my thought process in the project. Um, and uh, But there's certainly, uh, it's also good to hear all the support from the uh, North Amherst community members. Um, Katie. So um, Sam, just to summarize, um, this project would not be prohibited from prioritizing a certain percentage 
of the units to Amherst residents if the Zoning Board of Appeals pursued that. that that's what I think you're saying. That's what I my understanding was of the presentation and in agreement, Robin, of why um, Valley CDC isn't promoting that is what you the reason you gave, Robin. But th she was not saying that sh it would be prohibited and the Zoning Board of Appeals could pursue that if they wish to. And it would require further approval from the project backers in the state. I understand that, that um, you know, I could understand the, the logic behind, and I mean, I get the logic behind um, promoting an outside population. So, okay, thank you. Uh, Michelle? I was just gonna quickly respond to Robin if we're done with this line of thought and everyone's response. Respond did. related to the ball um, line, the the um, potential contaminants in the soil. Oh, sure, go ahead. I'll just I'll just say it. So I think that would be outside the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission because we deal with like wetlands. Basically, that's what we have jurisdiction over. Um, I think that would probably be the Department of Health. Um, or and but I will say that um, from personal experience, I lived as a grad student on High Street next to an old garage. And I found out from someone that told me I shouldn't eat the vegetables in my garden to test the soil. And the mercury was so high, the lead was so high, it was unfit to touch or children to play in. So I don't wanna lose track of that. And if anybody's listening, I think that should definitely be followed up with, because we're talking about family housing and probably community gardens at this place. Thank, thank you, Michelle. So I think uh, we went through all the individuals. I, I believe we started with Matt on this one. Uh, so the next project on the list is the East Street, East Street School, Belchtown Road Affordable Housing. Um, and let's start. Who started last time? Was it Matt or Tim? Do you recall? I think it was. Matt uh, did. Pardon? Matt did. All right, so Tim, uh, if you're able to. Okay, I, I feel this is a very important project. Uh, I don't feel we can afford to uh, provide the full amount and allocation. And I think as we go through our conversation, we should consider maybe some allocation and some uh, debt financing, some combination. And that's what I'd like to discuss in the future. Um, David. Well, no comment. Okay. Um, Katie? Sam, this is the East Street School. East Street School yeah. and Belchtown Road, the Wayfounders. Uh, yeah. Proposal. I'm, I'm um, in favor of providing as much funding as possible for this project um, and imagine it would have to be debt serviced. Okay. Um, Michelle? Um, similarly, um, I think there's already, you know, the town's already invested a lot and it's a good project and um, I'm in favor of funding as much as possible, but not probably the whole amount. Robin? Uh, yep, uh, I, I second that um, again. Would really love confirmation for uh, what the what, what the bare minimum is as a starting point. Uh, Andy is not here. Um, I gave this one a slightly higher rating uh, than the ball lane based on the number of units and uh, the location. Although both locations are good, certainly this is in the village center. Uh, I. I do. Uh, I did hear uh, David's comment regarding the affordable housing trust and how uh, these housing projects are priorities for the town, uh, as evidence from council and uh, efforts into it. We have uh, the dollar amounts on this one are uncertain. We have uh, limited funds. It's the it's a very large ask, and there has already been a one million dollar in kind contribution of sorts uh, via the land. At least that's the approximate estimate of the uh, 
property and the school, uh, to my understanding. So that factors in. And with these large dollar value programs, given our current funding, I see uh, a need to um, recognize our limitations and uh, probably go with less dollar amounts on these programs. Uh, but it's very good to see all of these uh, coming before us. Um, Matt? Yeah, similar as Michelle said, given the town has already contributed and the CPA committee contributed to the land and the East Street School, I think we need to keep this project moving forward. My understanding of what they are requesting the money for is basically the develop the 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 design development before they get the up up um, major funding from the state. So they're hoping for cash from us first to get to the point where they can get the money from the state. Um, so uh, from what I recall, if they don't get the amount from us, then they have to borrow it. We borrow it or they borrow it, or perhaps um, the town and its wisdom finds money somewhere else. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the discussion. I'm not sure whether there's an advantage of us borrowing it over them borrowing it, except that um, the way they started it is uh, they're looking for a cash contribution from the, the town to give them the best position of getting the grants from the state. Um, yeah, so I guess that's what has to happen. So we've gone through the cycle. I see Sean has his hand up. Uh, Sean? Yeah, uh, so we will, here, here in Robin's request, we will, the staff will reach out to these two just to try to get a better sense of what that um, minimum amount is that is needed to, to move these projects forward here and that that's a request for more information. So we'll try to come back to the next meeting with more info on that. And whether, I don't know whether the town has, Sean, I don't know whether the town has, there's any other pots of money out there. I noticed with respect to the VFW, money was came out of the um, American Rescue Funds for affordable yeah. housing. So there are some other, um, there are some other funds. There's, uh, and some of, some of those other funds have already been sort of included in the proposals that were submitted. Um, there's some money from American Rescue Plan Act. There's some uh, a prior CPA award. Um, there's the, the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, I think our goal is to, to look at all these pots, try, you know, help get these projects completed, but also not, use more than we have to because we want to save as much as we can to do more projects right um so i think that'll be yeah. our our project over the next week working with dave zomek is to look at these two these two large projects in particular and see maybe if there's a mix that can um allow both of them to move forward but also not completely drain all the cpa funds or all the arpa funds or um so so we'll try to come back with or, or, or mortgage there. future mortgage future cpa funds yeah yeah exactly so i think that's right so so we'll try to come back with something and we'll, we'll reach out to these two um these two companies and try to come back with a, a plan thanks um the next proposal is the rental subsidy program phase two uh david williams any comments on that no, I, 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 I support it, Okay, but no comments. Okay. Uh, Katie. Yeah, I fully support this. Um, and I think I might've given it a five. And um, I, I think part of my reasoning behind this is that uh, the impact it's had, the, the sort of results um, and the fact that it's, part of a really essential pipeline of getting folks to affordable housing and avoiding homelessness. There's, so, you know, it's this, this group of people that are really uh, teetering and this idea of sort of providing them with all of the support and the additional sort of subsidy to get them stabilized and on the right track so that they could then be ready for, um, you know, be more rent stabilized or even potentially be ready for um, to buy an affordable home. Um, so I like this as an essential part of the pipeline that we need in the town and um, would like to fund it fully if we can. Uh, Michelle? 
I second everything Katie said. I think that was well said. And I think that this program has demonstrated success and um, is a successful program and we should support it. Robin? Um, yeah, I particularly um, like the fact that they have created this program pairing it with CDBG funds to provide the social services aspect as somebody who has been applying for need-based programs for the past four or five years, I can testify to the fact that um, for the most privileged and educated of us, it is a tedious, bureaucratic, um, opaque process. And I think that their use of CDBG funds and the fact that they, that they, that they not only provide support, but that they require it, um, is a really great example of the kind of thing that we really want everybody to come to this committee with, which is to say, how can we leverage what's out there for the best possible outcome? So they're both leveraging the CDPG funds to provide the support, but then they're also getting these people who are, uh, you know, it, it, who are eligible for a wide variety of social services that are just, as someone who's experienced it personally, it is, it's absolutely not clear. Um, what you are eligible for. So I really think it, it's kind of a one, two, three, and, and I, I give it a five. Uh, Andy is not here. Uh, I support this project. Uh, I'm impressed with the, uh, the entire program with the wraparound services, uh, the need uh, of some of the most vulnerable folks who are in jeopardy. Um, uh, it seems to me that they have demonstrated a track record of uh, effectiveness uh, and effective utilization of funds as well. Um, I was disappointed last time around that their funds were returned uh, because they were unable during the uh, COVID time period to uh, meet the full need, but I was also impressed with the fact that they provided the funds back to us, even though they're asking it again now. Uh, so overall, I support the program and uh, I, mean, I recognize uh, the impact it can have for the target audience. Um, okay, those are the- uh, I haven't four. commented yet. Oh, no, excuse me. Or about. There you go, user error at the, okay. So we will start with Matt, forgive me. No, I, I haven't commented on the rental subsidy phase two yet. We will not start with Matt. We will continue with Matt. Okay. Yeah, I realize I'm going uh, against everyone else here by my rating. I just want to make clear, I think it's a great program. Um, I, I agree with Robin that and, and other people that joining the social services with the grants is the right answer. Um, I My concern is... I have a hard time seeing this as something that the CPA should be doing, and um, and and the community the this, the the other half of the funds from the community development block grant is also a Am town of Amherst um, grant. So um, yeah, the I, I, uh, I think it's a great program, but um, I I just don't see this as exactly what the CPA is supposed to be doing in terms of, um, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I mean, clearly the committee feels differently than me. I feel like CPA should be doing um, more uh, sort of capital one-off projects rather than ongoing needs that are required year after year after year. Um, so I, would, I, I, I think the program should continue. I would just rather see it funded a different way. Uh, Tim? Uh, fair comments. Uh, as a reminder, this is a three-year ask. Uh, so the reason I gave it was a four, whether or not when we get down to the final wire of trying to pair off some of these requests, maybe we could fund it for either one or two as opposed to the full three. Um, has everybody had a chance to speak on this? I believe so. <clears throat> I think we started with Dave. Uh, okay. So we've talked about the affordable housing programs, um, three large requests uh, with differing comments of uh, uh, levels of support. And uh, it seemed to be that the uh, financing, the available funds was uh, 
the predominant theme, uh, as may be the case elsewhere. Um, the next project is the conservation of five paintings by Mabel Loomis Todd. Uh, this has fives across the board um, with one four. Um, there was a inquiry uh, from the applicant about timing of funds. Uh, they seem to think they could work with uh, Michelson Galleries, although we're not allowed to reimburse work that's already occurred, which is why Tim raised the topic of using reserves for this, along with a couple of other projects. Um, it seems like the support is fairly unanimous on this, but let's just quickly go through it nonetheless so we retain our process. Um, starting with, um, I believe, Katie, is, I believe you're first now. Yeah, I, I'm in favor of fully funding this project. Uh, Michelle? I think it'd be a great way to preserve some interesting Amherst history. Um, I don't recall, like, will these be available to the public to view? Uh, maybe Emily Dickinson, yeah, okay. Yeah, fully in favor. Robin? Uh, fully in favor. Um, I did not get the impression, um, either at the Historic Commission meeting or this meeting, that the sense of urgency um, needed to be that it seemed like they would like to get started earlier but that there's not so much of a risk for further degradation so i would um not um not recommend that this that the reserve funds be used andy's not here so i'll speak uh, i'm fully in favor of it uh mm -hmm. like the project looked at the paintings the museum's great uh they do a lot with uh shoestring and i'm have an inherent bias towards projects with lower dollar amounts in them because we can do more. So I'm fully supportive of this. Uh, Matt? Yeah, this was a clear plan with a pretty modest budget. And it just seemed to be something that would was within the scope of what we should be doing. Uh, Tim? Yeah, again, I'm fully supportive. I'll raise the question of using the reserves. I think we had Sonia's idea of uh, having some criteria for the use of reserves. Mine was much more strategic. If we have we have five hundred and thirty three thousand dollars in reserves, and uh, it's for projects that uh, we hadn't anticipated. I think if we do a couple this year, we might be able to spread our dollars further for fiscal twenty four, and that's the reasoning for that discussion. Um, David? Well, let's support the program. And um, I would say the challenge of uh, where we spend our money or how we spend our money still becomes an issue. When I say our money, this city, the state's money. Okay. Um, Mostly. I believe we started with you on this last one, Katie, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. I, I just, um, Sam, I just wanted to um, take the liberty of saying that I, I Tim, I, um, I agree with you in terms of using reserves if we can this year, because it's, you know, because there's so many requests and so many worthy um, projects. But I also agree with Robin that this particular one didn't seem to rise to a sense of uh, super urgency in that the paintings might degrade, you know, soon, unlike some of the other projects where there's, it, there feels like a, you know, with a roof or something. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Mm -hmm. um, um, Sam, can I just pipe in here? I just sure. want to be clear that um, we can use the reserves for fiscal year for this proposal. It's just once we commit to using it for fiscal year 24, it's no longer available for fiscal year 23. That's all. So we can say that we want to release 300,000 and, and make the number that we have available right now mm -hmm. bigger. So. I don't want everybody to think that you you can only spend it in 23. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Yep. That's helpful for me as well to reiterate what I'm hearing you say, Sonia, is that we have this reserve. 
that's able to be used in this current fiscal year right. cycle. I'm, you it's, can... a, it's available at present should something come up. But if we, for some reason, removed all of the reserve funds and something came up this year, uh, we would not be able to do anything uh, until the fiscal year ends in, I believe it's like June 30th or July. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, it's mm -hmm. Now, um, so the next project is the Dickinson Farm House Roof and Renovation. That's the Wildwood. Um, I am not recalling who spoke first on the last one. I believe it was Katie. So I'm going to... I'll call on Michelle. Yeah, so um, that, that 97 is revised down to just uh, prioritize the roof. Is that right? So um, they, they removed the chimneys. Yeah, so yeah, I, I mean, I support helping them. They need a new roof. It's a public building, historic. That's all I really have to say on that one. Robin? Um, yep, so this is my my area here. <laughs> So, um, you know, fully in support of this project, it's a really important historic resource for the town. Um, I will begin to be a, a broken record with a bunch of these projects to say that um, historic preservation funds are hard to come by elsewhere. So um, I would encourage people to keep that in mind and I can answer specific questions about that, about what's realistic about being able to fund another fund a project from, from other places. Um, there's a, I've, I've been developing a matrix of funding sources that are available and they're just, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> so I'm um, fully in support of this project. Yeah. Uh, I'm in support of this. I raised my uh, rating when they removed the uh, chimneys and focused just on the roof and re removed uh, less than the dollar amount. Uh, dollar amount compared to the other projects is uh, not as expensive as some. The only questions that came to my mind were, you know, what materials might they use on the roof? Uh, you know, would it align with the long-term granted changes have been made in the past? Uh, it's, it would seem to me, uh, and this is more of a historic, historical commission uh, area, but it would seem to me that something besides shingles might be desirable for an older house, but that's, but the, it's still protecting the uh, the building and the contents inside. Uh, yes, Robin, your hand was up. Are you? Yep, yep. I'm just going to reiterate that um, when it comes to CPA projects and historic preservation, the Secretary of the Interior standards for preservation and rehabilitation are what come into play. The requirements about what building materials can be used they vary by project. There is some flexibility. But um, those those decisions are usually made. Um, CPA is is um, evolving at this point, and a woman I'm working with in the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is starting to serve as a role as someone who um, reviews scopes of work to make sure that that um, uh, whatever is being done in the project is aligned with is in alignment with what we call the standards. So that's why um, questions around what building materials you're using in historic preservation projects um, are have very specific parameters around them. And there should be this kind of third person who's, who's reviewing that. But just so everybody knows that, I, so I don't have to sound like a broken record. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Matt. We can't hear you. Yeah, the reason I rated the Dickinson fam, farmhouse a little lower than the uh, Zion Church or the South Congregational Church is I felt that perhaps this project wasn't quite as urgent to be done this year. And also I had some concerns about um, whether or not this actually was historic preservation, given that they were replacing um, they're putting synthetic shingles and they're putting um, uh, uh, PVC trim on there. But maybe I'm wrong. Um, I can speak to that if you want. Okay. Okay. It's basically what I just said that when the scope of work is developed, um, it should be approved by somebody to make sure. And there is some flexibility with these standards, but um, those decisions are made at uh, the level of historic 
preservation specialists. That's their field. They understand it. And we, we just basically need to move it to a point where the scope of work gets approved by them. And that's what determines the building materials. Usually you replace in-kind with in-kind, but they do make exceptions, particularly in the areas of roofs, because they're so critical to protect it, protecting the entire structure of the historic resource. If I understand you correctly, Robin, you're suggesting that there's a process that once the funds are approved, that they they get a check mark, for lack of a better term, on the materials. There should be a process, and I think that that is a process that's involved, that's evolving. But that um, my my understanding is that you know I'm starting to work within that field, and communities are starting to develop that process. So there is an appropriate okay. specialist. Um, approving the appropriate materials for that preservation a, job. A, lo a local process. Yes. Okay. Okay. It, um, do you think that has happened in this case for this project? Um, I think that the woman that I work with, the the preservation planner in, at PVPC, um, my understanding is that she is serving uh, that role for a municipality where the project is approved. Uh, it comes, and this is standard in other areas of historic preservation, that scope of work comes before the preservation specialist. They give it the yes or no. If they give it a no, they might have to, to, to rework the project so it's appropriate for the preservation standards. And then ideally it gets approved. So it's not something that thus far, I understand communities have in place enough to have somebody review a scope of work. And we don't even really have a, a project timeline, you know, where timeline is so tight and people generally come to these projects without a sense of the preservation field. So it's an appropriate step right now, I think afterwards to assure that that happens. But whenever there's a preservation project, the interior, uh, the Secretary of the Interior Standards are the gold standard for what can and can't be done in a historic building, much mm -hmm. like you would have um, standards like that, I'm sure, in conservation. If, if, I, if I understand what you're saying, uh, Robin, that it, it might be advisable in the future for Amherst to have a step in the process for that type of review. That would be ideal. We can have, yeah. we can have that discussion later. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes, but, uh, but I just wanted to give people a sense of kind of what, what, what a proper process would look like yeah. and why when you have a historic preservation come before you, it's not just whatever is cheapest or looks the same. There are very specific guidelines, yeah. No, I appreciate the uh, sharing with us your knowledge, uh, uh, your increasing level of knowledge in this field. Um, so Matt, you were the last person to speak on this. Tim. Yeah, I fully support this. Uh, my concern is I just don't know enough about whether or not the chimneys are a significant part of this project. I think they removed them fully understanding that our dollars are scarce this year. Uh, I would put this into a category of urgency, a question of urgencies. Um, if we wait to do this until after July 1st, how much damage, if not, would there be on the roof and whether or not it makes more sense to move some of that forward and use that reserve? Again, I'm, I think we need to have that reserve conversation. This project or on the other? I project? would put that in there, yes. I, I, I don't know how patched the roof now is uh, and whether or not it would be better for them to get started on the project like sooner than July 1st. And if so, maybe it makes sense to uh, spend some more reserves to have that happen. So I, that kind of thing. Um, Sonia, we're not able to see the screen at present, the spreadsheet. There's another set of Outlook files that are open. Uh, yes, great, thank you. Um, Let's see, we're on the Dickinson roof. I don't remember who I started with. On well, you this. stopped uh, with me, so. Okay. I know who I stopped with. All right. Uh, and so, David, I'm not sure if you spoke on this yet or not. The Dickinson um, farmhouse roof renovation, the Wildwood project. Any comments? Can you hear me, David? Who did you, who did you call, Sam? Uh, on you, David. I'm wondering if you have any comments on the Dickinson farmhouse um, 
uh, only is this something that um, must happen this year. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the conversation about the roof. And the little that I know about buildings, if the roof is not repaired, then you lose the rest of it, no matter what you have to do. So uh, we need to look at the possibility of providing if CPA is in a position to provide some resources to at least see that a roof is put on the building. Okay, uh, thank you. Now, um, Katie, did you have an opportunity to speak on this one? Uh, no, but I'm I'm in favor of it. And so for the yeah. sake of time, just two yeah. thumbs up. <laughs> okay. And again, I'm not recalling who the first person was. I think it was Michelle. Was it you, Michelle? Did you speak on the Dickinson farmhouse? Can you hear me, Michelle? I did, you started with me. That's okay, good. very good, just confirming. Uh, historic barn and outbuilding assessment program. Okay, um, that's me. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and it is you, Robin, so yeah, go up. ahead. Now you presented it, uh, do you wish to speak yeah. on it? Yeah, I do wish to speak on it. Um, so yeah, this was uh, this has been the historic commission has been talking about ways, uh, you know, pondering how can we um, address the loss of um, historic barn and outbuildings in our uh, semi-rural town. Um, and after some uh, research, at looking at programs in other states and talking to other preservation organizations, um, we as the committee decided that an assessment program would be the best way to go. And um, I, I'm gonna take a moment here to just pitch for uh, another one of our you know, sub, sub, subsidiary discussions around the appropriate use of um, administrative funds because I think I saw in the paperwork that was sent us that we have $50,000 still sitting from a couple other fiscal years and another 25 to come in. That said, as a proposal, um, I, I, I fully in support of this, this proposal. I wrote it. <laughs> I wrote it on behalf of my committee. But I would, I would reiterate to uh, the CPA committee members that um, in this case, we're talking about private homeowners. Um, if you, if you walk about town and you start paying attention, you will start to see these barns and um, private homeowners. Uh, CPA funds are are pretty much the only historic preservation resource that um, that private private property owners can turn to. Um, as a matter of fact, when you go to, I think both the CPI website and preserve, mm -hmm. you know, aspects of historic property, they direct you to CPI. So please keep that in mind when, when reviewing this program. It is a pilot program, a lower dollar amount, I think would be fine as long as it would allow us to get at least two or three assessments under our belt so that we could begin to understand if this is a helpful uh, helpful to the um, property owners of Amherst to preserve these really unique, um, unique structures. Uh, thank you, Robin, um, for the proposal and for talking about it. Um, I gave this a three. Uh, I always like low dollar amount proposals, particularly ones that reach out to the community. Uh, I think that's um, you know, a very low dollar amount uh, to seek to make a creative uh, impact. Uh, I did have questions on how this may or may not qualify. I, I did email the CPA coalition with just questions, uh, wondering if we could use administrative funds for this as opposed to proposal. Uh, they did reply back that uh, we can't use administrative funds from a CPA committee and provide those CPA administrative funds to another town committee. So we CPA administrative funds are for CPA as opposed to historical uh, commission. So they uh, next, or they recommended, they didn't recommend, they strongly said that it's not something to be used for administrative, but proposal is a different story, which is how you submitted it. 
Uh, and in regards to the proposal, the response was, uh, you know, you can only use them for historic reasons, blah, blah, blah. So any program to do these assessments would have to contain a procedure for the historic commission to review the asset and vote on its significance, unless the barn was on the state register. So what they're saying is that uh, it's fine to use the funds uh, essentially in the proposal uh, with the assumption or the inherent aspect of the proposal that any anyone that is getting funds for this, uh, that the historical commission has designated it an important or, uh, and, and I'll email this uh, to, yeah. to others. Uh, and the other, I was gonna say, that's a basic, and uh, I'm sorry that my, that I didn't make that clear enough in the proposal, but that, might have. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it is, it is a basic tenant of, uh, of any historic pres okay. preservation that it has to meet the definition of significance. And that's something that would um, always be uh, yeah. at the forefront of the HC process. Yeah. And the other comment that was referenced was that uh, the state's constitution limits grants of public money to private parties for private purposes, although it's debatable what the purpose of this is. Uh, but the essence of it, I asked, can it be used for administrative? I was thinking we might have that opportunity. Uh, I, I will, the response was no, because it's a different commission, uh, and that the barn should be designated as important by the historical commission. I'll send this to you. So uh, anyway, uh, that's why I gave it a free. I love the low dollar amount, but I was uncertain on the administration. I wanted to share this with the uh, committee members, My uh, what I discovered. Thank you. Um, Matt. Um, I am sympathetic to this pr proposal. I do recognize that there are a large number of um, barns and uh, farm buildings, outbuildings, historic old old buildings around town. Um, quite a few of them in my neighborhood, quite a few of them look like they're about to fall down. Um, I, yeah, so I'm not opposed to it. It just didn't seem to be like as urgent as some of the other requests. Uh -oh. Uh, Tim, uh, I like the pilot nation uh, notion of this, and I think if we come to the point where we have to shave dollars, we should fund it, but a little less than the fifteen thousand dollar request. Um, David, um, I think that it's a worthwhile project. We need to support it, and I need to figure out how best to fit it within our budget to support. Uh, uh, Katie? Yeah, I, I agree with what everyone has said. Um, and since it is a pilot, it seems like we did fund it with a little a lower amount and then invited um, the folks to come back to say there was a huge demand and it you know we've got a queue lined up and um, apply next year for for continuation would make sense to me okay um i believe we started with robin correct uh so uh michelle um yeah i like the idea of maybe shaving it down to at least you know two or three to see how it goes and what the outcomes are and I mean, I'm still sort of hung up on this, trying to prioritize public prominence so it's not, you know, kind of funding a private person or a specific neighborhood to enjoy the barn, but as many people as possible, if that's at all feasible. Okay. Uh, next project on the list is preparation of preservation restrictions for CPA funded projects in the amount of $20,000. Uh, this was another, this was the other one that I asked of the coalition whether or not it would be uh, administrative funds. Uh, and they again indicated that um, it's a proposal. Uh, and the question that they had was uh, it's unclear if the request is to write restrictions for past CPA projects or for future CPA projects. In either case, should the CPA, should the Community Preservation Act, it should be the Communication Preservation Act Committee who is determining if a restriction is required as part of the due diligence during the project approval process. 
In other words, when the projects come before us that are historic in nature, it's at that time that we should be considering uh, allocating funding for the HPRs, for the, the, the legal work, for lack of a better term, associated with it, that we should, if we have a standard policy uh, where every uh, building uh, historic preservation project requires a restriction, we could come up with something along those lines. But um, if it's retroactive, they're suggesting that the, in other words, projects that have already occurred, they're suggesting that we generate a list and approve funds for each specific project. Um, I'll send this to the committee so they can see it. We can still uh, support the, um, uh, the program, but uh, they just distinguish between past and present projects and uh, recognize the need for the CPA committee to uh, indicate with any given historic preservation project, the need, if we wish, for an HPR. In other words, we shouldn't be surprising applicants after the fact, oh, you need an HPR. Now that might've occurred at one point in the past with one of the churches, I think the first church, maybe others, they thought they were getting CPA funds and then it's like, oh, you gotta do the, you got to do this HPR, and they might have said, wait, this is a bit too restrictive. In this application cycle, we have included it in our discussions with the uh, applicants. We put it on the form that would you or would you not be uh, amenable to uh, historic preservation restriction. Uh, I realize I'm talking a lot, uh, distinct from the merits of the proposal, uh, but this just came back to me today. I'll share it with others. Um, but because of the general questions related to it, I gave it a three. Uh, my thought process is the work needs to get done. Uh, it's a new concept for us funding the HPR because in the past they've been dealt with uh, through the town. Whether that should be the case or not, it's a different story, but uh, they've been funding it through their own sources. Uh, and the other question on this proposal that I had was the uh, inclusion in the proposal of the um, <clears throat> um, consultant aspect of it. Um, in other words, do we want the applicants to uh, hire an outside consultant to be determining policies for historic preservation, or do we want the historical commission and the CPA to be doing so? I've spoken out of turn. I realize uh, I tagged on my thoughts on this project. In addition to the information I was sharing, uh, so I'm going to uh, call on the members to provide their thoughts on this proposal, even though I've uh, shared some additional information that I'll also be emailing. Uh, we started last time with Robin. Andy's not here, so I would have been the first person to speak anyway, and I just did. So we will go to Matt. Okay, so just a question for you, Sam. Did you get in your response that they couldn't, we couldn't use administrative funds for CPA restrictions on projects? Um, I will have to read this uh, in real time right now. So oh, okay. Let, so, let, so, let, so me, uh, let me let, just let, let me, me just read that and get back to you. Uh, shortly but while you continue with your discussion yeah so uh i was just like i understand the genesis of this is that there are a couple of um uh preservation restrictions that we, we were supposed to do on cpa funded projects which did not get done before the projects were done and are then hard to get done after the projects are done. Um, and the, the town lawyer is tired of doing this. Um, so sort of, I understand that a little bit, but um, I would like there to be a clearer sort of guidelines and policies about which and maybe it has to be spelled out in the CPA grant initially about 
um, which historic projects should have or require a um, historic preservation restriction and a little bit about specifically what that historic preservation restriction should cover. I mean, obviously, for example, if we take the South Congregational Church steeple restoration, we're not going to require them necessarily to put a historic preservation restriction on the entire church for the steeple restoration. We probably have to say, if we're going to fund the steeple restoration, then you have to maintain that historical steeple. And we should probably, if we're going to go with this, go down this path, we should say that in the actual CPA grant. That's kind of my opinion. Um, right now, I feel like um, we haven't gotten to that level of policy specificity that I would be comfortable funding this. Um, okay, uh, so I, I read what was provided to me. Uh, uh, the general uh, comment is present versus past projects, uh, and uh, nor should nor is the CPC administrative budget, our CPAC administrative budget, an account to pay for shortfalls in funding for past appropriations. Uh, it doesn't exactly answer your question, Matt, whether or not we could consider it administrative or not. But if the assumption is that we should going forward include. Um, funds for any CPA required HPRs in a project budget. Uh, if that's the case, then the retroactive ones shouldn't be funded through administrative funds to make up for a lack of initial funding. Long and short of it, it's I, a I think if we're gonna, I think if we're going to require them, we should be explicit. This is required. This is specifically required. And this is when it needs to be completed, whether it needs to be completed before they start the project or, you know, something specific. I, I understand, uh, Mike. I realize I'm distracting the conversation a bit from each project, but this was one that came to me as an uncertainty based on the nature of the application uh, in terms of how we might fund it. it I, I think it would be appropriate for our committee to decide if we like the essence of the proposal. That is to say, the fact that they that funds are needed for um, uh, paying for HPRs. And we may, as we get to funding, distinguish that from whether or not we want a consultant involved as well, uh, distinct from the legal services. So it's a bit more problematic uh, and we don't have to make decisions at this point, but I'm just raising my thought processes and I'll try to get a clearer response on that. Uh, Sonia, was that you uh, that I heard? Do you have anything to add to what I said? Yeah, I do. Um, I can't really speak um, with a, a lot of experience with the uh, preservations. That's usually the second floor planning conservation and inspections, and they're not here right, and Dave's not here right now. But I, we do have a grant agreement that before we, we release monies here, there's a grant agreement that the um, grantee needs to sign understanding there's a restriction on it. I think what the shortfall here is, is that the town hasn't put money in to pay for these restrictions into each individual project. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need to start doing going forward. Mm -hmm. And if we, if it's required by the town or by the historical commission, then um, we would have that money there to pay for it. But if it's not required, it would just go close back to CPA funding. So well, there is guess, a process. I'm just not really clear what their process is upstairs right now. But Dave could speak to that next week. We could also um, recognize this issue and find a solution for it. Uh, I'm just raising, I, I asked the question about administrative funds being used. Mm. Uh, and this was a new week present versus past projects that were, came in the response. My guess is there's a way to make it work. And if we look at the general intent of the projects uh, for our discussion purposes at this point in time, before we you know, need to get yeah. vote on things, uh, that will suffice. And we'll have a little bit more clarity on how we might want to proceed. 
Well, there is a grant agreement, like I said, that, that has to be signed by the grantee in the town before we release funds. And in there is whether there's a requirement for a grant. And before we release funds, they understand that and agree to yeah. those terms. What the shortfall here is that we haven't put the money into the individual projects to cover it. So and it, we and it, have to do that as a town, yeah. figure out what it's going to cost for that restriction and add it to the project, which is and, in the control of the town, present, not this, the grantee. This, this cycle, we've been asking, and we made it clear as part of the application, the need for historic preservation restrictions. So I think for current ones, the only question is the funding of the later ones. We can right. talk about that at a later time. I realize I've used up a little bit on this, but it's an issue that came up. Um, Sean, I see your hand is up. Yeah, just quickly, uh, Robin, you may know this since Dave's not here. Um, I think Matt indicated something along the lines of having a historic preservation restriction just on the steeple. I thought Dave said that's not how it works. That it's you either have one or you don't. You can't, you don't restrict just parts of buildings because you know you wouldn't want to have a really historic steeple, but then the rest of the building be not historic or you right. know, be changed. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I was going to make that point. Um, I mean, generally, um, I think generally exteriors are excluded. They can be included. I mean, that's at the discretion of the town. Um, but the but you're right. The principle of, of you mean in, interiors are excluded. Not did you, sorry. Did you yeah, interiors are excluded. Yeah, sorry. Um, because the exterior is the most that we can we consider the public view, the public view of a historic building significant external wheeling to be um, the public benefit. The benefit is the public view of the entire uh, building uh, entity that's visible to people on the outside. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's gen generally, um, um, yeah, generally the, 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 the public view. If you have a rear of a building, you know, you've got one of these houses that goes all the way back, you know, the, the, the preservation restriction might not extend to portions that aren't visible in the public view. So, okay, okay. I, I've taken well, up a I bit think, of time, go, time, go ahead, I, Matt. I think if that's the case, then I think you need to be probably clear up front that that is what you're requesting. And you probably need to at least have, you know, get that pretty far along before you start the project. Otherwise you're gonna get into the situation where, you know, they, they adjusted, that they preserved the window but then you're asking them to preserve everything. I think that's and, dealt and, with. They're, and they're like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, you know, in a church, maybe it's, it's clear. It's not such a problem, but in some other buildings, you know, putting a historic preservation restriction on the entire building might be seen as pretty restrictive. It seems to me that it's something for further discussion. Uh, uh, but for the time being, it makes sense for us to just uh, talk about the general um, the general proposals in front of us. Uh, okay. Sonia did indicate a process in terms of granting that would occur before the fundings are, funds are released. Uh, I think the questions that we face as a committee at this time um, related to this proposal are the past versus present projects and Sonia's recognition of funding for this type of work. Separate from that is a longer term discussion of any policies that may wish to be discussed. My advocacy on that would be that we do so uh, in conjunction with the Historical Commission and perhaps the CPA. Uh, so Matt, do you have anything else to add as we go forward with this on the general? Uh, no. Right, okay. Uh, Tim. No, no comments on this. Okay, uh, David. Um, we need clarification. It's not clear about, to me, listening to the discussion here. So uh, in essence, I'm supportive of the projects that we have, but there seem to be uh, a number of questions that need to be answered. And based on that, uh, we move forward. Uh, Katie? Yeah, I, I agree with Dave that there's some clarification needed. And for me, it's around um, not that 
this isn't an additional cost and it isn't potentially necessary and important. It's just to me, is this a CPA? Um, it feels very administrative. And so I just, I don't know, it, it feels like we're making up for um, missing including it in the budget. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm a little confused and would like more clarification. It could be that it's 917 and that's why I'm confused. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm um, aware of the time. <laughs> yeah, more, more conversation and maybe more information from the town would be helpful. Uh, and uh, Michelle. Uh, yeah, I think they need to be done. And I'm glad that, you know, there's agreements in the grant, but I agree there should be way more upfront discussion about it before it gets too far down to the grant process. And I am surprised that it's actually not more of a component in the budgets that we're discussing right now, if it's something that CPA has to do and we're on the hook for anyway. So if this is about catching up with stuff that needs to happen, and then we can move forward by integrating it better, I think that's a part of the discussion I'd like to hear. Okay, I believe, uh, Robin, did you get a chance to speak on this one? I did not. Um, yeah, I think there's the two issues of the process and um, the outstanding preservation restrictions um, uh, that that we have made investments in historic properties that are essentially at risk because the Geneva restriction in place. Um, so I'm not quite sure how we parse those two things, but I do support the idea of a process where ideally in my mind, you'd get, you know, the um, the applicant would be uh, awarded the grant, the funds don't come until 7-1. And the question is, how do we have the process in place and the funds in place to pay the consultant to prepare the preservation restriction between those two periods, right? And then the preservation restriction is prepared, the applicant is aware of it. like the most obvious um, um, process. And that is a question I think for the town and for the historic commission to kind of figure out how we're gonna go in that regard. Here, um, we're just talking about the need to get these preservation restrictions in place. And I just wanted to say um, a quick comment just to Matt's point about whether restricting a full public view is too restrictive for an award. Um, that really is the um, idea behind the whole historic preservation process is to protect the entire public view. It is a very restrictive bar and, and applicants are welcome to decline the award, but it is really what we expect because the whole building tied together is the resource that we are investing in in order for visitors and residents of the town to enjoy it. Okay. So I, I am going to continue with the two churches here, and then we can see uh, how we're feeling. Um, but we're, we're doing the historic with can we, historic projects. Yes. Can we uh, can we take a, a temperature on that one? My my brain is feeling a little tired. I don't know. When you say a temperature on, I mean <laughs> for all the other committee members whether uh, whether we would like yeah. to. To adjourn for the evening because it's I'm finding it a little hard to maintain focus after three and three and a half hours. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. We're, uh, we're more than halfway through, so it would I think we're we've made good headway. And yeah, we are. I the only thought was that we're on the vein of historic preservation. True. Uh, and. Um, I think we can let's let's do the next one and see how we go. Yeah, I appreciate your comment, Robin. Uh, so let's talk about the Zion Church, uh, and let's start with the first person who spoke last time was myself. So we're going to go with um, Matt. Cannot hear you. Sorry, I was muted. It wasn't only Robin. It was also, um, I think, Katie and Michelle's holding her head. Yeah. So I'll take it that you're another person on that. Uh, I'm neutral. I could continue, or I could, yeah. but I, I am, I am in favor of doing a quick poll. Okay. So I, I can go either way. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of folks. Uh, Matt's underscoring it a second time. Uh, who wants to? stop 
today's discussion and commence again next uh, week we, with the uh, Science Church. It seems that there's a number of folks who are tired. I'm seeing on the committee members, I'm seeing Robin, I'm seeing Katie. Uh, I can keep going through the churches. This is just like our normal concom meeting for me. <laughs> I mean, Michelle's fine. Anyone besides Robin and Katie? So maybe we could be concise. And David. Anyone else? Your question again, Sam. Yes. What's your question, David? Are, are we, yes. Are Would we, you prefer to adjourn, continue, or neutral? We're considering whether to cease discussion for the evening and commence uh, next week, or whether to proceed with two more historic preservation projects. Do you have an opinion on the matter? I, I, it's 921. I think we need to commence okay. now <laughs> and next week. So, so uh, start next week. Yes. Uh, okay. was, um, there's, some... there's enough members of the committee that I'm hearing who are fatigued uh, that it might uh, be negative uh, impact to genuine discussions. Um, although there are a number of members who have been in attendance listening, um, we don't have to uh, complete this at this point in time. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable either way, but I am hearing some uh, concerns. We did list a six to nine meeting, although uh, that was with a recognition we may or may not meet it. Uh, Tim, do you have a quick comment? Yeah, the uh, I would favor adjourning. However, I would like to maybe have that discussion of the use of reserves and urgency. These are two projects that I think are very important in that, and maybe we could have that next week. And for people to start thinking about that, uh, maybe, okay. Well, I, I'd like for, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I'd like for us to continue to go through all of the projects so that every project has uh, here, we hear from every committee member on each of the projects. Uh, what I'm well, hearing you say could, is- I, I agree with that. Maybe we could make that a, perhaps a separate agenda item I for understand. next week. It, it won't be something that we would not talk about. It'll be something okay. we'll, when Great. we get to the budgeting components, we'll by necessity have to consider that. For all right. the projects, we'll have the capacity to consider both the budgets but also uh, whether or not we wish to, for any particular project, um, fund them in the reserves or not. I don't know that we'll be looking to set a policy in the moment while we're doing discussions, but it is a discussion that's warranted for as a part of the budgeting process. It's gonna have to come up because we have 1.9 million right. and we have projects worth uh, seven point, I don't have the number in front of me right now, 7.8 it looks like. Uh, so budget's gonna be the key factor and we're gonna have to have that discussion and certainly whether or not to use reserves will be a component of that. So I hear what you're saying, Tim, I share your recognition of that issue. Uh, David? Yes, uh, can we get a copy? of um, this information, this summary to review. When you uh, say this information, which information are you referring to? Yes, the, the chart that we just went through. Oh, yes. Yeah. The straw See, poll. Yes. Yes, we'll yes, be able to get that. Yes, the straw poll, yes. Okay. Can you provide that, Sonia, over the course of the next week? So uh, yes. I'm... I'm in favor of hearing and listening to the members of the committee who are, for lack of a better term, tapped out. <laughs> and uh, I understand that. Um, we don't have an immediate deadline in terms of how we proceed, but I do want the committee members to understand that we'll continue with a thorough process where we talk about each project once, uh, and then we can start looking about which ones we may or may not want to consider. We can consider financial implications. We can also get feedback from the town on that. 
Um, Dave, I see that your hand is up again. Is this a no, new question? No, no, I didn't. So no. I, I will communicate with town staff, Sonia, regarding requests that have been made in this. There, uh, It's certainly been beneficial in terms of hearing the perspectives of others on some issues that have come up. Uh, it's a function of the volume of and the scope of the projects that we have in front of us that prevents us from getting it all done in a single meeting. It's just not going to happen. Uh, and I think it's a testament to the committee members uh, that we are, in fact, being deliberative about this. I think it's very important to the applicants. Uh, I think it's important to our committee. And uh, you know, I'll continue to focus, try to focus that we uh, go step by step uh, because uh, uh, it's very important to everyone involved. And um, usually through those types of processes, best case decisions can be made, even though it's a challenging situation. I'd like to thank all the audience members who are still with us. Uh, I recognize that some of the projects that you are hoping to hear us talk about uh, may not have been discussed. Um, that's a function of uh, the volume of the task in front of us, but we will uh, commence with our next meeting uh, as it relates to projects. Um, with a committee discussion of the uh, proposals. We've gone through the public hearing component. We won't commence with the public hearing again next week. We will just pick up where we left off here. So, uh, Sonia, do you have anything else to add? No, I'm all set. All right. So thank you all uh, for uh, your feedback and for joining me as we uh, talk about these things. It's certainly interesting, even if fatiguing. Uh, so it's currently 9.29. Uh, I will adjourn this meeting until next Thursday at 6 p.m., uh, where we will commence again. Uh, have a good evening, all, and uh, have a good week. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Feel free to email me and or Sonia with questions. Bye.